cave. <laughs> yeah. Like mic check one two three. Mic check one two three. Wait, I could hear it. Right. This is QFS Transportation Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruise Chevrolet on My TV Charleston. A week ago, the Goose Creek Gators were garnering all the headlines for an offense that had scored 50 points a game in its last three, heading into last week's game at Somerville. Now it's a shot at redemption for the Gators, who did not play well in a loss to the Green Wave. And a region game on top of that, and a rivalry game with the Berkeley Stags. We welcome you down to the field, Darren Goldwater and my friend Everett German. It's just like Jason Winstead told me earlier today, the Goose Creek coach. He said ever since he's been here, you can't win this region without getting through the Berkeley stack. Yeah, it all starts there. You know, Dr. Jerry Brown back at Berkeley after a long stint away. Berkeley has just always been the team to beat. In the low country, not much has changed. Randy Robinson was here for quite some time. Jerry Brown's taken over. It's back to the way he wants to play, which is a big adjustment for some of his guys, and they've been ravaged by COVID throughout the year. Their numbers, about as good as they've been all year long, and it's Cam Stevens, the guy that's leading them, really in most aspects. Yeah, he's the senior leader, you know, a guy that plays offense, defense, he's all in. And when you need that type of leadership, when you have a new kind of system taken in, he's bought in. Now, Coach Brown needs the rest of his tags to follow his lead. Dimitri Simmons garners those headlines for the Gators, rightfully so, on the ground. But this team is multifaceted. Drew Moore's got two excellent receivers. If they want to play better offensively, it starts with the quarterback more. The air raid in Goose Creek. The quarterback, like you said, Drew, already 1,300 yards passing, 15 touchdowns. I'm looking forward to seeing him throw it around tonight. Got a couple of 6'3 receivers to play with as well. A region game for the Stags and the Gators is coming up next on QFS Transportation Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruise Chevrolet. All right. Hey, okay. That sounds better. Yeah, much, much better. Okay. Much better. Uh, that's better. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Goodbye. I think Jerry, it just needed your magic touch. <laughs> you had to lay hands on it. <laughs> that's it, right? You just show up. It's like boom.
<laughs> no. About set to go for the Gators and the Stags. Goose Creek comes in at three and two. They've got a region game already under their belts. They had this region game, then a non-region game, then back into region. It's just one of those strange years for Jason Winstead and the Gators, as he told me, Look, everything is still in front of us. Maybe it was the crowd last week. Maybe it was the defensive line of Somerville, the two Joneses, number eight and nine, on the line for the green wave that flustered that offense, held them to the point where they never could really get in rhythm. Couldn't get Simmons going, couldn't get the aerial attack going. They're happy to be back home. They understand that Berkeley is a team you gotta get through if you're going to win region seven, five A. And like he said, the playoffs are determined by region record. Forget last week, Everett. Everything's still right in front of them. Yeah, you can't let that Somerville game beat you twice. So, like you said, not the performance that they wanted, but again, they still had a chance to win that contest, only losing 20 to 13 on last week's Friday Night Rivals game. So, a chance for redemption. And uh, at the end of the day, region play is really all that matters. The Stags will kick off here to the Gators. The Stags story has been one that unfortunately has mirrored a lot of what has happened around around this country, I guess you could say the world. COVID has impacted them greatly in this football season. They've only played two games. They had two early season games canceled, two that you don't know how they would have gone, which way they would have gone, River Bluff and Sumter. Maybe it could give them some experience, but as Jerry Brown told me earlier today, yeah, maybe that could have been experience, but at the same time, Maybe we could be banged up had we played those games. You just don't know when you're playing a game of hypotheticals. But what you do know from the Goose Creek side is that they don't know a lot about Berkeley. Right. They know generally what Jerry Brown wants to do, a form of the triple option. But they've got two games on film. And Jason Winstead said this is his sixth game. And it's the sixth time that he doesn't feel comfortable about everything he knows or doesn't know about his opponent. Yeah, it's got to be hard to prepare. Like you said, only two games. They're on that every other week schedule. Mm. They played on September 3rd, took the 10th off, played on the 17th, took the 28th off, and now they're playing uh, here tonight. Two men deep for the Gators. This is going to be Maury and Scott who bluffs that reverse, and Maury and Scott will take it out to about the 32-yard line. And that's where the Gators will begin. First, we'll get you the Cruz Chevrolet keys to the game from Everett German. Yeah, I think, Darren, for Goose Creek, no turnovers. Last week, that was an issue uh, that Coach Winstead talked about. And also, balance. We know they can throw it, but it's a lot easier to throw it when you can run the football as well. For Berkeley, trust the process, the system. Dr. Jerry Brown, his system is in place. Do your, your uh, job, and everything will be fine. And also, have discipline. Really, that's for all football teams around the country. Dimitri Simmons can find space typically when there isn't a whole lot of space. He is spun around as he picks up maybe about two yards by Ernest Weatherford, one of the inside linebackers. The linebackers are actually being coached at the moment by Jerry Brown as well. That's one of the positions he is currently coaching. Yeah, I just can't imagine, Darren, just not being able to have consistency because of the, the COVID and people quarantine. It's just hard to kind of get in rhythm. 
Incompletion is going to bring a third down. The good five. news for the Stags is that this has been a full week of practice for them. Their numbers from a pure depth standpoint, roster standpoint, are as good as they've been through the year. And they forced a third down and five here. Two plays in on their defensive possession. Base 3-4, that's been a staple for Jerry Brown, and it's Demetrius Simmons who lowers the shoulder and puts the hit on Shine Gillian and gets six yards when he needed five for a Miller Mott College first down. And that's how you want to finish a run. You want to deliver the hit instead of absorbing it, and a nice strong run uh, by the Gators as they get a first down on their opening drive. Here's Drew Moore showing you that this can be a balanced team, and Levine gave up on that. He knew he was out of bounds. He gives up, then he takes a shot, and it'll tack on 15. I got to tell you, Darren, I don't know if that was a catchable pass, but both officials threw their uh, yellow penalty flag, so I guess they both thought that he had a chance. Not granted, when you have that type of size, you can go up and get it, but that one seemed to be a, a tad bit high, but again, the penalty against Berkeley. Kerry Collins is the referee for tonight's game. When he introduced himself, I said, just like the Penn State quarterback. He said, yeah, I spell it differently. That's fine. We're not putting your name on the screen. <laughs> to me, the Penn State grad, that's what it'll be. And the wide receivers for Green Street have a considerably uh, height advantage. So look for them to throw a bunch of jump balls tonight. Here's Simmons trying to pick his way through, and that time is spun down by Montario McNeil. So three different tacklers on the last few plays as Goose Creek goes quickly after a pickup of five. Yeah, Temple, 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 just an attempt to get this offense in rhythm. Here's Simmons trying to keep that rhythm going. He is grabbed by Nelson on the backside, and that'll be enough for a first down, a pickup of six or seven more. He's such a patient runner, allowing the, uh, obviously the holes to open for themselves, and he explodes through it. Very impressive what I've seen so far. Moore has two big targets. He's taking a shot now, but throws it behind Davian Malloy. And an opportunity missed for the Gators. That first down, by the way, a Miller Mott College first down, proudly supporting the Low Country's high school sports. Let's take a look at the replay here. A nice ball, slightly thrown behind Malloy, but still a very catchable pass. And uh, obviously the Berkeley Stags, they catch a break there because that could have easily been six. Already an offense that looks considerably more comfortable than last week. That was Kion Smith in motion. This is Dimitri Simmons picking his way around that right edge. And Shine Gillian, who grabs him at the shoulder pads, give him nine yards. And again, we've seen the patience. That's what makes running backs special when they can just, you know, at their tempo and then hit it uh, at the right time. Very impressive with what Simmons is doing as he's driving uh, this Gator offense down the field. Gators couldn't find a rhythm last week at Somerville. It started early and lasted throughout. Here's Simmons now. Plants the foot and tries to get downhill. Manages to stay in bounds. Gets down to a first and goal situation with another Miller Mott College first down. Nice run, but I got to give some credit to James Levine. Normally, wide receivers, we call their names when they're catching passes. How about that block on the edge that allowed Simmons to get the additional yards? As we see right here, like I said, Levine just kind of locked him up, got in his way, pushed him down the field, and now first and goal for the Gators. Simmons takes it away from Moore, and Gillian has him at the ankles. Gillian's a guy who Jerry Brown said is very coachable, and that's where I got the nugget. He's currently coaching linebacker. He says, I'd know, because I'm the one in his ear all week. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and goal. Simmons is bottled up. Stephen Graham, 18, helps out Gillian. It's third and goal. Great pursuit by that stag defense, making it very difficult for Goose Creek. A lot of times, there, when you get this close, this is where it's difficult to get those additional two and three yards that you need to score. So, looks like this so far, the stag defense, bend but don't break mentality, and they're making it very difficult for Goose Creek. 11th play of a drive that started at their own 32. Third down and goal with Simmons. Touchdown, Gators. Trident Technical College touchdown. Your future, your college. 11 plays, 68 yards, and just about three minutes off that first quarter clock for the Gators. I guess the Goose Creek offense must have heard me saying how well that defense was in the red zone. That was a hole. Darren, I think you and I both could have run through that hole for a touchdown. Great job by the offensive line of Goose Creek creating that hole for Simmons to score his 13th touchdown of the season. There was a stretch this year where Simmons had back-to-back -back games of six touchdowns. Five on the ground, one through the air. 
back to back. <laughs> he gets back on track after not scoring last week, and the Gators have the early lead on QFS Transportation Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. <laughs> Best drive the Goose Creek Gators have thrown together in two weeks, or at least one week and one drive. And it ends with Simmons in the end zone after a run of two. For the fourth year head coach, Jason Winstead, who now stands at 22 and 12, he's won 11 of his 14 region games. And a win and a region title this year would be the third straight region championship. For the Gators. So like he said, everything is in front of him, and this game has started about as well as you could ask for. Yeah, that's a very impressive opening drive to be able to simply just march the ball down the field. And it was all runs. Uh, you know, they tried, they attempted a couple of passes, but yeah, give all that credit to Simmons, who was just the dominant force on that drive. Zach Drake handles the kicking duties for the Gators. The guy who Jason Winstead recruited to come out to the team, he said, I needed a kicker, <laughs> and I went after him. And it's a good thing he's on the team. Both teams actually have kickers they're pretty confident in. Well, geez, when you kick the ball like that, why, why do you have to be recruited? You should be out there. <laughs> Gadsden bobbled it, so he elects to take it out of the end zone and will not make it to the 20-yard line. So Berkeley, in just its third game this year, comes in with a 1-1 one one record. They beat Stahl 48-12. They lost to Somerville two weeks later. That was on the 17th of September. Fell behind 21-0, got back to within 21-14, and just couldn't finish the comeback effort. That was two weeks ago, and now they're back on the field again to face this Goose Creek Gator team, and they're down by a score already. What has to be frustrating for Berkeley in that Somerville game, they outgained them 335-195, to 195, but two costly turnovers and just too many uh, mental mistakes. Into the belly of Taylor Jenkins. That's the B-back. If you're not familiar with this style of offense, you need to get that dive started in order to open everything else up. You'll see Jenkins and Campbell operate from right behind the quarterback, Waits Wilson. Yeah, like you see, you have to start work inside out. So once you can kind of make them commit to that initial give, that should open up the uh, outside for Troy Reed in this offense. So uh, you got some big ones up there in the front line for Goose Creek. Let's see if they can kind of stymie that uh, initial hit. Second down and 11. They lost a yard. The pitch is on the ground and scooped up. They'll say it's an incomplete pass. It went forward as Austin Gray was the intended slot back. He had a little bit of running room had he been able to feel that that pitch cleanly. It was definitely the right read. Third, down and 11. But again, usually, not, was that a forward pass? It looked like it was may have been at least lateral at some point, but I guess they're going to say no as a forward pass, but the right read by the quarterback. And so now we'll see what the stacks can come up with on third down and 11, and I'm sure this is not a situation <laughs> down a distance that Jerry Brown wants to be in. 
They'll try the middle here once again with Taylor Jenkins, and Jenkins is stuffed around the line. You'll see different tempos, as you've just seen from these first two offensive possessions. Goose Creek showed you tempo. Berkeley wants to hold on to the ball. They want to shorten this game. They want Goose Creek's offense on the sideline. Yeah, you want to shorten the game as much, and that means controlling the clock, going on long, sustained drives. you got to be able to run the ball and, you know, obviously stay out of those third and uh, long situations where usually you have to pass in order to extend the drive. Big leg kicker handles all of the kicking duties. That's Alex Sanchez. And here's Maury and Scott reversing field and running backwards in the process. He'll eventually pick up about seven yards as he stumbles his way out of bounds. Good field position for the Gators. Yeah, nice tackle by Stephen Graham. Looked like he was going to take a bad angle, but able to uh, correct that mistake and kind of somewhat stay in their lanes. Good coverage by this Berkeley punt team. And unfortunately for Berkeley, the Goose Creek offense back on the field. And back on the field in Berkeley territory after going 68 yards in about three minutes. Now Darren, when you have this type of field position, normally this is where coaches like to, well, just go for it on the first play. So if I'm in that secondary for Berkeley, <laughs> you better be on your toes, especially with these big wide receivers that the Gators have. The quick change opportunities, right? Instead, they come with Maury and Scott. Scott on the reverse is thrown to the ground by Stephen Graham. Malloy on the carry for the Gators. Nice. Davian Malloy, 10. Nice pursuit by Berkeley, being able to go run sideline to sideline as the Gators try to use their speed to get on the outside, but this Berkeley defense wasn't having it. And now it's uh, another opportunity for the Gators on offense. And an opportunity for Dimitri Simmons, who's able to get to the edge, and he loses his footing. Jason Winstead said to me, if they had to play this game last week, they probably couldn't have played on this field with all the rain we had all week last week. And then this field took a beating with some B team and JV team. It looks good. It's painted. But footing is not great. I thought it was kind of ironic that when we talked with Coach Winstead earlier, he was actually marking the field. (laughs) I'm like, wow. When you're a head coach, you you do it all. You coach and you also mark the field uh, on game day. Sometimes I feel bad hassling these coaches for rosters and stats because they're doing a lot more than coaching. Right. On second down, it's Simmons who cradles it to his chest and waits for the hole as a flag comes in after the first down run. So we'll check on that. He kind of put that foot in the ground and immediately turned up the field. And his vision is very impressive, his ability to kind of see the hole and uh, get to the hole quickly. But as you said, Darren, we're going to have what looks like a block in the back against the Gators, and I guess that's how that whole game <laughs> <laughs> opened because of the illegal block. Let's see if we can see the block. I haven't seen it yet, but it was somewhere right in the middle as you see the fly come flying in. So that negates a, a big run by Simmons. So second down at about 12 now, 10 yards from the spot. Second year starter, the junior Drew Moore, and the senior here, Dimitri Simmons, who pushes into the back of Gillion to get the defender out of the way and pick up an extra yard and another Miller Mott College first down. Look at my man, Jaden Johnson, the senior, 6'4, 320 pounds, saying, Hey, buddy, run behind me. I got you. He just barrels over the defenders of Berkeley and Simmons again, just taking his time. He's probably going to be over 100 yards here in the first quarter. Jeez, Darren, 6'4", 320. <laughs> Glad he doesn't live at my house. Jeez, oh, wait, that's a, that's a big one. <laughs> there, there's some size on the lines for both of these. The, the Berkeley center is Edie. You'll see him get to the line as soon as they break the huddle. Next time they have it, you'll, you'll notice him. And the two offenses have been more productive, if you take out Goose Creek's last game, than than the defenses have been. And Goose Creek has always had big physical offensive linemen, probably, not probably, the the most uh, noticed one, obviously Brandon Shell, Mm -hmm. who now plays in the uh, NFL. I believe he's, last last year he was with the Jets. Not sure if he's still with the Jets or maybe it was Seattle, but 
Uh, yeah, they've always just done a great job of kind of grooming offensive linemen here back to the Chuck Reedy days. And it looks like this tradition is uh, continuing here uh, up at the creek. Haven't given you a positive identification of the player who is being tended to because we don't have one. And I don't want to speculate on it or guess until we can actually get a look at it. Yeah, it looks like it's... So it is Jameer Willis, the senior defensive end. That happened behind the play. It wasn't very close to the flow of the play. And a couple of teammates will help him get off the field. Yeah, it looks like he can't even put pressure on it. You never want to see, obviously, injuries. Injuries are part of football. Hopefully he'll be able to if not return tonight. Nothing serious. Absolutely. But it doesn't look great for Jameer Willis as he has helped off the field. So Goose Creek's got a first down from the 25 after the latest Miller Mott College first down. And it's more to the air. And it's James Levine on the receiving end with another first down as he slips through the arms of Galliard and out of bounds. Big target, big uh, receiving range. Like you said, 6-4. Nice job. Just a three-step drop on Moore. Plants his back foot and hits his target. Nice job. Great execution by the Gators. Here's Simmons again waiting for that hole. And once you can see the rhythm, right? I mean, it, once he starts getting into the flow, you can even see it on the Simmons second on the drive field. here, the patience and then that explosion from a step. Yeah, he's definitely on pace for 200-yard night tonight because he is just absolutely uh, just take, tearing up this defensive by the side because you see an easy touchdown. pitch and catch by the Gators. Kion Smith, sixth touchdown of the year for the 6'3 senior. This drive goes 46 yards in the span of less than two and a half minutes. And this Gators offense is looking like the offense of three weeks prior to last week where they were averaging 50 points a game over that stretch. So just a skinny post there. Man wide open. Definitely some miscommunication on the back end by uh, the Stags. And again, just an easy throw and catch for the Gators as they look to add their uh, 14th point of the quarter. A little bit more than halfway through the opening quarter. The Gators have gone 68 yards and 46 yards into very quick and efficient and penalty-free from their standpoint drives, with the exception of one, almost penalty-free. But the execution markedly improved from last week, and now it's up to this Berkeley offense right. to hold on to that football and keep Goose Creek's offense off the field. And the unfortunate thing for Berkeley, their offense is not really one that allows you to catch up quickly because theirs is more of a, uh, a ground and pound and kind of you know take your time rushing the ball up the field. So still plenty of time, obviously, here in the first quarter, but you don't want to continue to fall behind too much. A big drive coming up here for the Stags as they need to get something going definitely can't really afford another uh, three and out it's it's got to be hard right I mean to to have 25 different players spend at least two weeks in quarantine this is the Stags four different coaches that have been quarantined at times and you're going a game then two weeks off and then a game and then two weeks off right on top of that you're trying to instill a new offense which is complicated and a new defense Yes, yeah, so not the formula, best recipe <laughs> for a new coach to take over. But it helps if you got a guy like Luke Gadsden who's able to spin his way out close to the 30. I think they'll mark him out at the 32. A little bit better field position for the second Stags possession. And again, you know, you talk about that offense as we take a look at the uh, replay of the return. Nice wedge up in the middle, and again, just hit the seam and just go. So let's see now from an offensive standpoint. Because maybe you, you got to feel like this Goose Creek team, they're kind of king on the run. Let's see if they can maybe pop a big pass and open up that uh, front seven. Waits Wilson is the quarterback, and it's a give through the middle, but nothing there for Taylor Jenkins. Yeah, and until the Stags at least attempt a throw, you best believe 
That secondary, they're going to be in man press. That front seven there, creeping up, creeping up, creeping up. Because right now, I'm thinking maybe they don't think Berkeley can throw the ball on them. Wilson's carried it 13 times. Jerry Brown says he is absolutely capable of running this offense. He's got Austin Gray in one slot back side. At the top of your screen, Luke Gadsden, number three in the bottom. Gadsden is the motion man. It's Wilson who keeps it himself, and he is grabbed at the ankles by Ben Marabella. It'll be third down and long here for the Stags. And if you notice, that Goose Creek defensive front four, they're get, getting great penetration into the backfield of Berkeley and is really throwing the timing off of this Stag offense. So this offense is really predicated on timing, and great job by Goose Creek thus far of not allowing them to get in rhythm and just causing a bunch of uh, issues in the backfield. Berkeley takes a timeout with three and a half minutes to go in this opening quarter, facing what could be their second straight three and out and a Goose Creek offense that they haven't been able to stop yet. I asked Coach Brown earlier today, because if you're not familiar with Jerry Brown's story, and he, I, I know you are, right. he had a ton of success when he was with Berkeley years ago. In his career, he has five state titles and almost 300 career wins. Yeah. He left the low country, had a couple stops, came back down, and I said to him, man, how is it? Is it, is it good to be back? Is it, uh, what, what's it like? He said, well, no, because right now this year's been so challenging that you're not able to even appreciate that. Let's introduce you to the third member of the crew, Trooper Bob. Hey, yeah, we're down here on the sidelines with Sheridia and Taryn from Rockstar Cheer Charleston. All right, Sheridia, so tell me about the competitive programs you have. All right, so we do have teams that compete nationally and locally, but we also have programs for children that want to just do a low commitment activity. We have Power Tumbling, Cheer 101, um, as well as um, Little Explorers for ages 2 to 5. So lots of great fun for little kids and children from 2 to 18 years old. Is it too late to join or you got to do long-term commitment? So it is too late to join for our um, elite teams, but we, our Power Tumbling classes run month to month. So you can enroll at any time, you can unenroll at any time, there's no commitment. You don't have to pay to sign up for like a session or anything like that. You can just hop in and join a class, see if it's for you. And any other competitive options? So we do have our half year teams that are about to begin on November 7th, our tryouts. So those guys compete in Myrtle Beach and here locally, practice once a week. A nice um, low commitment uh, activity for folks that maybe missed our full year tryouts do school cheer or just want to try cheerleading for the very first time. All right, you got something exciting coming up at the end of this month. We do. We have our second annual Trunk or Treat. It's open to the public. Um, it's going to be at the gym. Anybody can come. It's super fun. You can get um, a tour of the gym, see what we're about, and just see everybody's cool costumes. You get a bunch of candy? Of course. Hey. It's October 31st from 4 to 6 p.m. Speaking of Halloween, when I was a kid, I was so ugly, I had a trick or treat over the phone. All right, <laughs> check out Rockstar Cheer Charleston. We'll send it back to you guys upstairs. The whole point of trick-or-treating is you can wear a costume. I guess you can uh, put a mask on. Yeah, I guess Super Bob said he wears this mask year-round, so he didn't even need a special mask. Berkeley got it on fourth down on the run from Gadsden, and it looked like the play was blown up. So Miller Mott College first down for the Stags. They're first of the game, and Waits Ooh. Wilson has a couple, maybe three yards. Yeah, Berkeley needed one yard on that play, and they may have gotten one and a half. It looked like it was going to be uh, a loss, but give credit to the Stags for being able to pick up that much-needed first down. That's a look at the first down run that Everett was just describing. I mean, that's in some ways a risk. You're down 14 nothing. You're going for it on your own 40 in the first quarter, but you got to change the momentum. And I don't know about you, Darren, but you know, both of us are armchair quarterbacks. I've never been a big fan on fourth and one, throwing the ball backwards mm -hmm. to pick up, because now you have to get five yards because, you you know, you pitch it behind you. But as we both have said, Dr. Jerry Brown has forgotten more football than you and I will ever know. Just had a good shot of Jerry Brown there. Did he get a timeout before the delay of game? No. 50 years of coaching, Dr. Jerry Brown. Let's take a look. Looks good, too, man. He has, yeah. he has slimmed down a lot. I think he's, when I first saw him on his first stint back from 1993 through, you know, 2010, he used to walk, uh, actually used to sit on the sidelines on a stool and also had, like, a cane. So I think he had, like, back issues. But, yeah, he looks phenomenal, and uh, it's just good to have the doctor back uh, up in Monk's Corner. After the penalty, it's second down and 11 here for the Stags. 
and nothing there. Ben Marabella, 35, got a shoulder into the ball carrier immediately. And Jalen Richardson then puts him down as Taylor Jenkins takes another punishing hit. And it's just all about reads for this Berkeley offense. And again, having just so many days quarantine, not full team practices, it's almost impossible. So I kind of have a feeling like Dr. Brown is maybe kind of treating this season as like a glorified practice. Because, again, th these are the reps that these guys should be getting in practice that they're getting in game situations. And that's just very tough to run this type of offense. Yeah, and they're not even playing enough games to get the reps. This is just their third, and it's Goose Creek sixth. Now it's third down and ten. And what could be the last play of the opening quarter, we got a flag in as Gadsden slips through a tackle in the backfield and then is wrapped in the big arms of Jaden Johnson. Yeah, those are, when we say big arms, again, 320 pounds. For I'll call him Mr. Johnson uh, when you're that that size. It looks like a legal shift, Aaron. Yep. And that's another thing with this offense. You have so many people in motion as we take a look at the replay. We didn't get a chance to see that illegal shift. But, yeah, I think the guy coming from the left to right and then had someone else moving at the same time as well. If he gets set, that results in the penalty. They do have to run one more play. There's about a six and a half, seven second difference between what you see and the play clock. And Jaden Johnson, who just made that tackle, good indication he's going both ways tonight since he's the starting center. Here's Gadsden on a bit of a trap. Got by Johnson, and waiting for him was Jalen Richardson. And another flag. A great misdirection that time by Berkeley. And give credit to this front four of Goose Creek. you got to be disciplined. And once again, another illegal shift called against Berkeley. Because you know, Darren, you, you have to be disciplined and stay in your, your lanes, because if not, the ball will literally be running right by you. So, again, just that misdirection didn't fool Goose Creek. They were right on top of it. And now you have to think, Darren, in a fourth down situation of this nature, you might want to bring on the punt team. And we'll watch them punt after we get to hear from some of our fine sponsors who make QFS transportation Friday night rivals driven by Crew Chevrolet possible every single week. Week six of it already. It's a 14-0 lead for the Gators as they try and bounce back from last week's loss at Somerville. They've got... I don't know if we're on... Good to see Seabrook Randley smiling there, wearing number 13. I don't know the extent of the injury. He's wearing a brace on his right knee. But he was hurting last week's game at Somerville, and he's been a contributor, a starter on this Goose Creek defense. Good to see him in good spirits, though, not dressed out and after suffering the injury last week. It's been a great game. I know Somerville got the win, you know, 20-13. to 13. And Drew Moore actually threw for 220 yards, but he had a couple of just bad turnovers. And they were one for 14 on third down conversions. That won't get it done in that plus three turnovers. 
Yeah, it was a long day. It was a long day for the Gators, no doubt. But they did make it close there at the end. That punt, Alex Sanchez probably wants back because Winstead's group, up 14, has great field position again in one quarter of action. They had 114 yards and two TDs on a couple of drives, and the Gators will start at their own 45-yard line here. Yeah, I'm going for the juggler. Just off the, you, you got them on the heels, defense, they have to be tired after two long drives uh, by Goose Creek in that first quarter. You got those big uh, wide receivers, everybody run the nine route. Just go straight down the field, I'm going to throw it up. Somebody come down with the play. A couple of them up top, another down at the bottom of your screen, but it's Simmons who thought about off tackle and then cuts it to midfield straight through the middle of that line for a gain of five. This dude is absolutely just toting the mail. I mean, he's the mailman. Darren, he's averaging close to 10 yards a carry coming into the season. He was close to 900 yards. He'll be well over 1,000 after tonight. No doubt about it. James Levine waits on that long throw to get out to him, but picks up the first down, about seven yards on that first down. An a and fire and water restoration first down, making your house home again after disaster strikes. It's almost like pick your poison. You can't stack the box because you don't want to have them air it out. But if you're too far back off to take away the deep ball, well, then Mr. Simmons is just going to you know carve you up. So it's like pick your poison right now if you're Berkeley. And that's what makes this offense so good. You've got a guy who can bruise you and run away from you in Dimitri Simmons, who's just picked up another a and fire and water restoration first down with a gain of 12. Nice job bouncing it outside, head up, looking down the field. Just gets, he just turns it up as soon as he can. So a nice run once again by Simmons. It's not like he wears down easily either. I mean, he's getting the ball in four, five, six consecutive plays Picking up more than that in yards as he goes. That's about eight more for him. Well, when you got Jaden Johnson, who's 6'4", and LeVar Brown, who's 6'2", it's easy to kind of hide behind those big guys. They kind of get lost, and then you just explode at the last minute like this play here. a and I fire and water restoration, first down, making your house home again. After disaster strikes, 55 Ernest Weatherford on the stop. Well, they may need to call a and I because they're on fire right now, this <laughs> offense, and the way he's firing through those holes. It's going to be a long night for Berkeley. They've got to come up with a stop. There he goes untouched. Darts his way back in. Touchdown. Dimitri Simmons, second of the day. A Trident Technical College touchdown. Your future, your college. The Gators have three offensive possessions and three touchdowns and lead it 20 to nothing. And the offense doing a great job out there leading the charge. I believe, Darren, that looked like Matthew Nix out there opening the hole for Mr. Simmons. And as you mentioned, his second rushing touchdown of the night, his 14th of the season. And right now it is all Goose Creek, as they say in this part of the woods, the creek is rising. (laughs) The creek looking good. Their offense was getting a whole lot of attention and a whole lot of publicity. Somerville shut them down, and it looks like they're back out to prove something. Actually, I take that back. That would be, I don't want to slight them, man. Hunley Price, the junior, 5'11", 265 pounds, out leading the charge. And now, Darren, I can see why. This is my first time seeing Goose Creek this season. I can see why they're at a 3-0 and at home and averaging 50 points a game here at Goose Creek. They scored, what, 34 against West Ashley. Ah, uh, okay. Then he scored 49 against Wilson. Eh, that's all right. And then exploded for 69 against Stratford. I mean, that's your arch rival, the guys, your friends right down the street. Yeah, this is a high-powered offense. And think about it, Darren. They really have not thrown the ball that much. That guy right there, Mr. Dimitri Simmons, has been a one-man wrecking crew. You can see his thumb doesn't feel great. But it doesn't look like it's much of a problem. As of now, he is not committed. There isn't a, a huge offer out there. But if these numbers keep up, and if this consistency continues throughout the rest of the year, he's got a 3-4 GPA, and he's pushing up on 1,000 yards and 15 touchdowns in six games. Simmons will be playing on Saturday. It's just a matter of yeah. where. Six feet, 185, a senior. What do you think of some place like a Charlotte that comes to mind, a smaller school uh, of that nature? Mm-hmm. And, you know, go out there and make a name, you know, for yourself. And, yeah, when you have grades and athleticism, uh, that just is obviously a, a ton of opportunities for that young man. 
Short kick here to Gadsden. He'll take it, tiptoeing the sideline at the five. And here goes Gadsden with a little bit of room up the far sideline. It'll be the best starting field position for the Stags on what will be their third possession of the game. Right now, Berkeley just needs something positive. Just string together a couple of first downs, if not for anything else, to keep the defense off the field and let them kind of catch their breath. But right now, they are they're, they're close to being on E, so it's very important for this offense to come up with just a play or two just to allow that defense uh, to kind of get a little rest. With Ever German, I'm Darren Goldwater. Glad you're with us for QFS Transportation. Friday Night Rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet. They come with the counter in Gadsden, and that left side is plugged up well. Isaiah Addison, number 11, one of four or five Gators that piled on after a run of about three. When you look at this Berkeley offensive line, they got some big bodies there. You know, we just got to get those guys to put get some hats on hats and just allow the running backs an opportunity to make a play. But right now, it's like they once they take the handoff, they have three, four, or five black jerseys right on top of them. So far, everything's been up the middle, Darren. Let's see if they're kind of setting them up to try to hit a big one on the outside. You can see all 11 Goose Creek defenders in your screen. Ten of them, you can say, are pretty much up in the box within about eight yards nothing there for reggie campbell as we check in with trooper bob he's with that big old check five hundred dollars for that check qfs transportation proud to present each participating home school a check for five hundred dollars the grant provides each school with extra funding to help make their school great over the last 11 seasons friday night rivals and our sponsors have donated over one hundred twenty thousand dollars to low country students and schools congratulations from my tv charleston abc news 4 and qfs transportation third down to the air it's a strike to troy reed and a first down the best play of the night for the berkeley stags gets him to the 40 yard line and a pickup of 18 yards. Look at that. The Stags can throw the football. A nice pass that time. It's Troy Reed coming down uh, with the catch. Waits Wilson just taking his time. They, they gave him a little bit of time. A little nice little 10-yard curl. Get him in right in the in the good spot, right in the hands. First down, the drive continues for Berkeley. I got to tell you, the play before that, Darren, uh, Jalen Richardson, the nose guard, they list him as 5'10", 270. Darren, if he's 270, <laughs> I'm 130. There's no way. That, that's a big old boy there in the middle. Now it is Wilson trying to get to the outside. Marabella got an arm on a shoelace, maybe a finger on a shoelace. It's a run of four, but there's a little bit of bounce in the step of the Stags after that first down completion. Great. Look at this offensive line surge, pushing the black jerseys down the field, giving his – uh, quarterback, an opportunity to turn a cor corner and make something positive. That's what you need. This offensive drive, uh, specifically the offensive line of Berkeley, doing a phenomenal job just getting those pads lower and allowing his team an opportunity. Now, Jason Winstead was close to one of the officials, and they blew the whistle and said it's not an official timeout. So as they sort this out, We'll check in with Trooper Bob. Yeah, guys, I'm down here with the principal, Miss Washington, Goose Creek yeah. High School. All right, so we're a couple weeks into the new year. you got some exciting things going on. Yes, absolutely, we do. This year we started our Law Enforcement Services Program. Um, it's a partnership with Berkeley County Sheriff's Office, and we're teaching our kids the basics of, and fundamentals of law enforcement. We're also implementing the Leader in Me Initiative, which is an advisory program where students learn the seven habits of highly effective people. So we're trying to teach our kids how to be leaders before they actually go into the real world. Well, that's excellent stuff, especially at law enforcement stuff. You happy with the turnout tonight? Absolutely. It's homecoming. It's so great to see all of our folks back in the house. Um, wonderful night we're having here. All right, but there you go. I'm hearing some cheering in the background. Let's find out what that's about. Send it back to you guys. Well, the night just got a whole lot better if she could see what happened behind her. It was a 36-yard touchdown run for Luke Gadsden. A Trident Technical College touchdown, your future, your college. I love the way this young man just up in the hole, running through tackles, arm tackles. Get off of me. You can't bring me down with an arm tackle. But young man, right here in this situation, you got to put the ball in the outside hand just in case that defender knocks it out. But outstanding run by Luke Gatson as the Stags finally on the board. 62 yards, which is 
51 yards longer than they picked up in their two previous drives combined. And the Stags, who trailed 21-0 the last time they played and lost 21-14, trailed 21-0, and now they're on the board here in Goose Creek. From Goose Creek, Darren Goldwater, Everett German, the Berkeley Stags have showed up with a five-play, 62-yard touchdown drive. It included the first pass and completion for Waits Wilson. Actually, check it down the notes. Looks like it was his second pass. These numbers are unofficial. I'll give you another eye-opening unofficial number when Goose Creek gets the ball, which will be shortly as the Stags have added a touchdown here after that third down completion, first down. Got a 38-yard touchdown run from Gadsden. And Levine had a knee down. He sure did. Goose Creek is going to start just across their own five. I was about to say, it looked like he went down on a knee to feel that, so good call by the officials. Now, the Berkeley offense, they've done their job. Can this Berkeley defense slow down the high-powered offense of Goose Creek? unofficial numbers here best we can do to keep them as the game is is going along we don't have stat broadcast for for high school games i've got the the gators offense at about 169 yards right now and i have drew Moore at about 19 yards passing which means simmons has about 150 yards in a quarter's worth of action and he has maybe one more here nice job by the defense of the Stags not allowing Goose Creek to pick up four or five yards on first down. So now at least it's second down and long, and that changes the play calling because before prior to this drive, they've been getting, like you said, almost close to first downs every time. So let's see what the defense can come up with. Kenny Johnson had that first carry. That's a dangerous ball into coverage sliding over the top. And intended for Kion Smith, so it'll be third down and seven. Great coverage. They had somebody underneath, someone over the top. Third down coming up for this Berkeley team. And I tell you what, Darren, if they could somehow stop this Gator offense from picking up nine yards, actually not nine, uh, six, they're going to get good field position if they force the punt. Simmons is back in for this third down play, so they rested him for two snaps. And the play clock needed resetting, it appears. Is this the infamous uh, raise the roof signal? It is. I didn't see the signal given, but I saw them point to the play clock, and I saw it adjust itself. And they're trying to communicate the timing. Fortunate to be here at Goose Creek. They have play clocks. In each end zone, so no excuse. It's right there in front of you. Kion Smith to the top of your screen on third and seven. It's Simmons, and there's nothing doing in the middle of that line for Simmons. 
It'll be the first time that the Gators have punted. Their first three drives netted 169 yards and three touchdowns. This one nets five yards. Yeah, all of a sudden now that defense got a little pep in their step after that last offensive touchdown uh, by the Stag. So that momentum is now carrying over to Berkeley. Let's see if they can take advantage here in a big punt opportunity is the Gators uh, punting out of their end zone. And look where Troy Reed is standing at the 41-yard line of Goose Creek. So this could be great field position for the Stags. Reed. Watches this one roll yeah. into Berkeley territory. There's a flag down. It was behind the gunner on the near side of the field. And if you're Jerry Brown, you got to tell uh, that young man, Troy Reed, you got to come up and fair catch that because he lost about, I'd say, there, what, 10 to 15 yards on the roll. It was, a, it was a high kick. No pressure. Call for the fair catch and save yourself uh, all of that field position. And on top of that, looks like the penalty is against Berkeley. It is. Kerry Collins shows you the block in the back, so you lose 10 or 15 on the roll. You lose 10 more there, and they're going to start at their own 32. Yeah, they had no punt block set up. That was simply a return. And, again, that was easily a play that he could have uh, came up with a fair catch. Just wanted to play it safe, but... So much for that great field position. <laughs> <Just now the stags. laughs> Looks like they're starting at their, what, 32-yard line. About the spot they've started their the last two drives. 5.46 to go opening half. Stags into the end zone the last time they touched it. They'll continue to pound this away through the middle. That's just an imperative part of what they're trying to do. Reggie Campbell. And my man Jalen Richardson also on the stop. And that's one thing that this Gator defense has done nicely tonight. Nothing up the middle. They have absolutely shut down uh, that fullback dive, that fullback give. And so they're making it very, very difficult uh, for the Stags to establish anything there. All their success on offense for Berkeley has come on the outside through the air. Berkeley will get the ball to begin the third quarter. So they can put together a time-consuming drive. This one through the middle, first time they found room. Reggie Campbell still on his feet after picking up 13 yards. His forward progress is stopped at the 46-yard line. That's the second time tonight I've said something complimentary about one part of the defense. Now the next way the offense responds with a big run right up the middle after we just talked about how well Goose Creek had done a nice job of uh, shutting down the middle. So a nice run by the Stags and again another first down. That's what we're seeing there and now all of a sudden the Stags are starting to string first down after first down together going on long drives shortening the game keeping that high powered Goose Creek offense on the sideline. A&I fire and water restoration first down making your house home again after disaster strikes. Wilson keeps, gets one on the edge to Cam Stevens, and Stevens has another first down, and he is put down by Jordan Turner after a run of 14. Big hit by Turner, but Cam Stevens, Mr. Do-Everything, offense, defense, trainer, water boy, sells popcorn, he does everything for this tag, uh, offensive unit, or football team, I should say, and a nice run. Once again, they have done such a great job of closing off that middle, it's opening up things on the outside, and Jerry Brown finally getting his offense in rhythm. We talked about Cam Stevens at the outset of the game tonight. When you're instilling a new offense like this, when you've gone through all of the adversity that they've gone through, you need a guy who's fully bought in and fully invested, and that's what Cam Stevens represents. That's Stevens, the motion man, and this is Reggie Campbell again, who has about four yards. So now you're getting... 3-4 Three, four, right. instead of one and two, and you're chewing up time as you work down towards the half. All right, that was a nice hard run by Campbell, but when he turned his back to that and defender, he kind of had the ball kind of loose out there. He's got to know he's going through traffic. You got to cover that thing up, two hands on it, so that way it won't be easily poked away from you. Stag's defense just forced their first three and out. First time they stopped the Gators. That ball's on the ground. You can see it in the pile there, and you can see Wilson reach out and corral it. The Stags maintain possession. 
And that's what you hate to see. The offense running smoothly, everything in sync, and then you have a play that just kind of knocks uh, knocks you off of of rhythm. So fortunately, Stag's able to maintain uh, possession. But I'm sure that's one that Wilson wished he was able to obviously field cleanly. And now a big third down coming up. And you have to think, Darren. This is two down territory. Not going to punt from here, and obviously you can't attempt the field goal. So they got two two plays to pick up seven, uh, seven yards. And Wilson's going to put it in the air. Wilson. They're going to give it to him. Cam Stevens caught it. I'm not sure if the line judge here had a great view. It looks like he's looking to carry Collins to see if anyone else had a good shot. Nice tight spiral, and yeah, it's kind of hard to see. Mm -hmm. they they're going to say, yeah, but fourth down now. You have to think those big ends on that defensive front of Goose Creek, they're looking to oh, stuff the middle. Here, Might be another time there in the pop it on the outside. So as you can see at the top of the field, a lot of green in that area. Taylor Jenkins is the B-back directly behind Wilson. It is Jenkins, and it is Jenkins who has a first down. Inside a minute 45 to go in this half. The clock will start again when the ball is spotted. And I remind you, Berkeley gets the ball to start the third. Chew up clock, find some points. Exactly. What you don't want to do is you want to use all of this time. You want to cap it off at a minimum with a field goal. But, of course, Dr. Jerry Brown and the Stags, they're thinking big. They're thinking we want six. And we got 125 to do it. Here's Stevens. Gatson looking for the lead block. Instead, yeah. you get a block in the back. And he knew it. Troy Reed did. Yeah, two two mental errors there. You missed the initial block, and then you compound that to make it even worse by blocking the back. That was an easy call by the side judge. And unfortunately, that will be 10 yards uh, from the spot of the foul. I think the rule there is if you can see the guy's number, keep your hands off. Mm-hmm. Because it's better to just give up, uh, have a two-yard loss, but now that's a 12-yard loss because of the penalty. Ben Marabella, who has been playing well tonight, he's been in on a lot of these stops, and who played very well in the game at Somerville last week, is the injured player. He was coming in at the back end of that play, after the block in the back, the pile goes down on the ground, and then he went over that pile. And it looked like he lost his footing just slightly before that, but he's up under his own power. Well, some people just look like football players. He's got the headband on, you know, just tough. He don't need sleeves. You know, he just, just looks like a tough football player for this Gator football unit. Well, you're a Clemson fan. And he's right. wearing a headband with long hair, yeah, and he reminds you of... Oh, well, not, <laughs> not, not that guy that played for Jacksonville last night. I can assure you that. But, uh, yeah, tough situation. It looks like he just, I don't know, maybe hit his head on the ground. It looked like he tripped over his teammates mm -hmm. in the pile. But, fortunately, good to see him able to get up and walk off on his own power. Nearing a minute to go here in this half. First down and 21 officially. And first down and 22 after Chris Russell Holmes forces a loss of about a yard. Now Berkeley has two timeouts. They're not really known for throwing, and they seem to be taking their, their time on this big third down play coming up. Looks like I almost got away with a face mask. No call, but hey, it's third down. The clock just steady <laughs> taken away. I have to think there, and it's probably going to be a pass. <laughs> Unless they can have that. Was it remember the Titans when they ran that play? Yes. <laughs> we're going to run four plays and we're going to run them perfectly. <laughs> uh, you do what works. Is this going to work with Gadsden? Gadsden trying to get to the sideline and does not. The clock continues to roll. This will be a Berkeley timeout with third down coming up here for the Stags and 22 seconds left in the first half. Tried to get to the outside, but great containment by the Goose Creek defense. As Luke Gatson has the only touchdown of the night for the Stags. Was open briefly and give credit. Again, this is a very athletic and quick Goose Creek defensive team. I mean, they run sideline to sideline. They pursue the football well. And it's going to be hard to outrun the Gators. 
And even though Jerry Brown's club has two games under their belt, and even though it's not running as smoothly as they would like at the moment, if this offense keeps coming at you, I mean, right. it, it kills you slowly. It's just like a punch here, a punch in the gut there, well, you don't two see here, three week. there. That's right. You know, at the, what used to be when Paul Johnson was at Georgia Tech, that's what made Georgia Tech so difficult because not many teams ran that system. So you know, everybody runs the spread or you know some type of passing attack, and you have to get prepared for this in a short week. Yeah, it makes it very difficult. Here's Wilson to throw on third down, and it's intercepted. It's picked off there by Jordan Turner with 15 seconds to go in the half. Yeah, the junior cornerback did a nice job. Didn't really think he would go on the fly route, sat on that route, and able to make the diving interception. Nice pass thrown by Wilson. But a great job of getting inside Troy Reed. That'll be the first turnover of the night. Goose Creek is setting up to take a knee here and take their 21-7 lead into the locker room. That's a big play there. We talked about it with Berkeley getting the ball to begin the third quarter, kind of stop that momentum. That's the old Bill Belichick strategy, get the ball, score right before half, and then, of course, score as well in the uh, the opening drive of the third quarter. They took a timeout. They snapped it, took a knee, and then Goose Creek took a timeout. Honestly, if I got... Two wide receivers that are 6'2", 6'3", 6'4". Just run the fly route. Just th- if someone intercepts it, it's just like a punt, although there's only 14 seconds left, but you might get past interference. Things, stranger things have happened. Wow, you're so good. I want, did the timeout come before the knee? Because they didn't spot the ball back. I wonder if Winstead didn't get that timeout in earlier just before that play that has to be what it is because it was three four yards behind the line where Moore took a knee the ball is still at the line of scrimmage so I think Winstead called timeout thinking what what you're thinking wait wait why are we taking a knee here why don't we at least take a shot I mean really nothing to and just tell your lineman to be on alert should it be intercepted don't give up on the play you know be in position Simmons motions out of the backfield. Here go. Throw it down. Good blocking. Oh, he will. Here it goes. It only gets to about the 40-yard line. Kion Smith tips it. Then it's intercepted. And then out of bounds. Yeah. No, no hurt there. Now, I thought he sh- probably should have thrown it a little earlier in rhythm as this guy was running down because once those guys got down, they had to stop and readjust. But, again, nothing hurt by attempting to essentially throw what we call a high school Hail Mary. You see right there, he had two. He could get the ball out in front of him and allow him to run under it. But at this point, yeah, it was kind of a, it was going to be tough for the Gators to be able to complete that. Devontae Galliard with the interception. There was an illegal man downfield, so that's declined. Berkeley will take that interception, and the Stags will probably take a knee. Yeah, probably a, a good idea. You kind of you've had you've had a little t- taste of success on the offensive side and the defensive side for Berkeley. You now you go in at the halftime, you know, you make the adjustments, you get the ball to start out the second you know second half, and you got to think if you can tell your team, hey, go down, score, it's a one possession game. The last two times they had it, they did move the ball a little bit. First two times it was it was nothing positive for Berkeley. They got two yards on their first possession. And kind of went forward and backwards a little bit and eventually ended with nine on their second possession. But then found the end zone and then had a little bit of success before the interception moments ago. So Berkeley, which I remind you, trailed in the last game they played against Somerville, 21-0. Yeah. Then it was 21-14, and Somerville barely hung on to win that game. They trailed in this one 21-0, and they'll trail at the half. 21-7 21-7 in a Region 7-5A game against the two-time defending region champs, the Goose Creek Gators, who played a much cleaner, much more efficient, and especially if you're Dimitri Simmons, much more impressive first half than they did last week at Somerville. Yeah, they did a nice job of establishing the ground game. 
Second half, I expect them to air it out a little more. Jason Winstead is with our Trooper Bob. Hey, guys, down here on the sidelines with the coach. Coach, 21-7 halftime. Are you happy with your team's performance? Yeah, I mean, we're up, but uh, they, got, they got a dangerous offense. So, you know, a whole other half to go here. We scored 21 in the corner, so they can too. You know, so it's a long ways away. What would you like to see more of your team in the second half? We just need to get off the field. We gave up a big third down on a touchdown drive, and that, that kept it alive, and they scored. So we can get off the field. I think our offense can move the football some. They had some success, so we just got to maintain it. Coach, thank you for your time. Good luck in the second half. There you guys have it. To you. Unofficially, 174 yards for Goose Creek in the half, 103 for the Berkeley Stags. Halftime coming up on QFS Transportation, Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Halftime report brought to you by Roper St. Francis Hospital, where experience matters. Experience matters in the classroom, too. That's why each week, David Ayler Law Offices and Riders Law Group, proud to highlight a scholar-athlete from each participating school. The students selected have an opportunity to win a $5,000 scholarship at the end of the season. So let's introduce you to our scholar-athletes this week. We start on the Berkeley side of things. Varsity track, clearly a tennis player as well, and a captain of cross country. It is Amy Lee Reichert. I like this note. It's a 5397 GPA on a 4.0 scale. I was not aware there was anything other than a 4.0 scale, but it is still very impressive to have a 539 GPA. She's been a couple time cross country captain and a STAG Award recipient as well. Very active in the community. Member of the Monks Corner United Methodist Church and Church Youth Group. We told you already, Demetrius Summers has a GPA of 3-4. He also has about 150 yards rushing in this game and two touchdowns. He was the scholar athlete for Goose Creek last week, so he again is registered to win a $5,000 scholarship at the end of the year, as is Amy Lee Reichert. All of the scholar athletes you're introduced to this year are in that pool, then one is selected for the $5,000 scholarship. Now let's hear from David Ayler himself with Scott Eisberg. David Ayler joining us again, presenting our scholar-athlete 
so much fun each and every year to unveil them to you. The process is so cool each and every year. I know our last one during the pandemic was incredible. She even baked you a cake. Yeah, she literally baked me a cake, and I ate it, of course. Um, you know, just shows so many of the different talents that these students have. It's so much fun to be able to, you know, see everything they've accomplished when they've submitted at the beginning of the year, and then watch their performances throughout the year. Uh, it's very rewarding. Yeah, and this is not just football we're talking. We're talking about student athletes from every sport, and I think that's what kind of makes it fun is you get to see a wide array of student athletes. Right, you get to see uh, students playing all different sports, uh, having different interests within the classroom, and then outside of the classroom with charities and nonprofits. Yeah, that's always a fun thing. I know our last one heading to Clemson. Who knows where they will go this year? That's David Ayler from our Scholar Athlete Award presentation. It is homecoming here at Goose Creek. The festivities ongoing as we continue at the half. Berkeley with the most recent score. They get the ball to begin the third quarter as well. It's halftime brought to you by Roper St. Francis Hospital, where experience matters. And I would imagine you need some experience if, if you're a cheerleader as well. Because, you know, you, you can fall. You don't want to fall. You want to be no. perfectly in sync. Me. And you want to win your rock star cheer of the night. And that's what it's time for. Log on to abcnews4.com backslash poll. Vote for I either of the cheer squads. You got to go. You got to step to us before you make a touch. Reminder, abcnews4.com backslash poll vote for either of the cheer squads and cast a vote for the Rockstar Cheer of the Night. We'll give you results 
later in the show. Everett, you're familiar with this, even though you haven't been on with us this year. The road team always has an advantage in these cheers, always. And now they get the stag throwing around a gator in the background. Like I said, if I didn't know any better, I would have thought I was at a Milwaukee Bucks game, fear the deer, you know, back there in the backdrop. But, yeah, that uh, that deer, he's, it's, it's been a battle of the mascots, you know, thus far. And I'd have to think fear the deer has uh, got a slight edge uh, over the, the – Gator, maybe crocodile. He's it's got to be a gator. They're yeah, the Goose Creek Gators. Yeah, you can't be a crocodile. Well, as a we, we got to put some. Uh, that that gator needs to eat. <laughs> we got to get a little, get some meat on that gator for sure. <laughs> well, get him in a lake, and maybe you can find something to eat. <laughs> Halftime continues. Twenty-one-seven. Gators lead the stags. Halftime Report brought to you by Roper St. Francis Hospital, where experience matters. The folks at All-American Awards have some serious experience. That's what enables them to put together a trophy that looks like the Lombardi Trophy. It's just a mini Lombardi Trophy. And I saw it in person. It was on the desk with Scott Eisberg and Natalie Spala uh, doing their pregame whatever they would like to call it. They're they're live hits here before the game. It looks good. It looks even better in person than it looks right there. For almost 30 years, All-American Awards in Mount Pleasant has been your local trophy shop, providing both corporate and sports awards to meet your style and budget. Visit Steve and his crew at All-American Awards when you recognize excellence. That's awardsguy.com. It looks like a Lombardi trophy. That's what I'm saying. A.K.A. the Tom Brady trophy invitational yeah we'll we'll see who takes that on sunday we'll take a break when we get back we'll be close to the third quarter it'll be the stags who do have the most recent points on the board they get it to begin the second half a qfs transportation friday night rivals driven by cruise chevrolet
pretty much puts a wrap on your Roper St. Francis halftime report where experience matters. Now getting close to the start of the third quarter between the Stags and the Gators. Up in the booth, Darren Goldwater, Everett German. We thought halftime in full transparency was going to get shortened here. We were told it would be a longer halftime because of homecoming. That is very typical. That That's what everybody does. And then I guess they went through their proceedings faster than they thought. Asked if we could reduce the time. We said, sure, let's do it. And it didn't happen. Yeah. Let's, talk, <laughs> let's get back to this GPA of the uh, the Berkeley tennis player. Okay. It was like 5'3", five, 5'4". Five, yeah, something He's like, like that. I'm thinking in high school, if I added all eight of my semesters together, <laughs> I'd be it'd be close to getting that 5'3". Five, five, that, that's... Most people strive for a 4.0. To have a 5.3, that that's pretty impressive. That's one of the things doing these games that always makes me laugh because you see these scholar athletes, and so many of them are over five. How do you get to that? Yeah, what, I, I don't know if I did something wrong or if they just did something super right, which is probably the answer. Both yeah. both are probably correct statements. It's just different <laughs> times now. You know, my daughter's a freshman over at West Ashley, and just – just the things like the homework and stuff that they bring home. I'm like, maybe I'm not smarter than a third grader. What was that TV show? Third Are grade you or fifth smarter grader? than a fifth grader? Fifth grader, well, I believe. Based on some of the homework, she asked, I'm like, thank goodness for Alexa and Google. <laughs> oh, we have a third grader <laughs> right. who's coming home with, and you're, okay, wait. Yeah, wait now, now, I can do it. We're not at the point of me looking at third grade math and saying, I can't figure this out. But it is at the point of me saying, well, let, let's walk through this. Like, right. Let's show, sure. let, let's show our work to make sure the teacher knows yes. while I'm showing my work so that Jeez. I make sure I know. But these high schools today, you know, just the opportunities. And, you know, back in our day, Darren, it was you could take home economics, keyboarding, <laughs> and, and auto mechanics as your electives. And now, you know, it's just like it's literally pre-college with some of the things that you can, you know, get involved in, whether it be like welding or being a sports trainer or, you know, cosmetology school it's just very impressive and so for these student athletes that not only goose creek and berkeley but all the schools around the the uh, low country just kudos to them because they're doing a great job of preparing people you know for life and i like to say for college because college is not for everybody mm -hmm. but whether you can be a productive citizen acquire a trade lord knows and we live in charleston i mean if you hadn't checked there's always <laughs> going to be a need for heating and air yep. or you know boeing or any of these other major companies that we have so just congratulations to these guys on the football field the cheerleaders the band members because it's uh it's pretty impressive what these youngsters are doing these days no doubt with ever german i'm darren goldwater i want to pass along a note that I think only Scott Eisberg <laughs> Rain Man. would ever have known. And that was the exact text I sent I sent back to him. We referenced Remember the Titans because, well, that's what Berkeley is trying to do, run a couple of plays and, and run them perfectly. William Patton is the actor's name who plays Coach Yost yeah. in Remember the Titans. Apparently, he's an Isle of Palms native. Who knew? Other than Scott Eisberg. But... That is true. So William Patton is an Isle of Palms native, and he's the one who was calling the plays. Yeah, uh, he was the coach who was who was replaced and then stayed on staff. Um, I'll tell you what, if this sport, this sports broadcast, now granted it is working because Scotty, by far the the best sports broadcaster in Charleston. But if he ever needs to change you know, careers, he probably should be like a detective or work for the FBI because Scotty, if he wants to do a story, he will track you now. Somehow, some way, he's going to find you. He did an outstanding story, so good that I can't remember the guy's name, which is, is, is a terrible, <laughs> terrible spot to be in when you're live right now. Last week, it was about a kicking coach. Yes, I saw. Who's, who's got all the credentials in the world. Now he's down here helping out. That story makes it all the way up to a relative of mine in New Jersey who sends me a message I know that guy really well. He went to my high school, <laughs> and we've been friends for 50 years. <laughs> oh, Scotty, 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 Eisberg. Of course, you can catch Scotty and, and Nat uh, Natalie uh, Spala. Spala. There you go. After uh, what, 11 o'clock news. That's right. That That's branded the same way. QFS Transportation, Friday Night Rivals at 11 o'clock on Channel 4. You can get highlights of the Somerville-Stratford game. Somerville has a lead at last check in that mm -hmm. one. Kane Bay, last check, has a lead on Wando, Fort Dorchester. Uh, last time we heard. 15-0. That's it. Yeah. Right? You'd think it would be a little bit bigger, but it was a 15-0 lead last we heard. 
uh, against Ashley Ridge. Those games and others in the Low Country. Yeah. Skeezer tonight. Pleasa. Of course. I'm assuming you and Natalie aren't friends. Isn't she a Michigan grad? Well, that is how we were introduced. That you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an introduction. Hi, I'm from Penn State, and I'm from Michigan. <laughs> so, now we haven't talked much about it, but I, she was a she played basketball at, at a Michigan in the system of the University okay. of Michigan at, at one of those schools. Gotcha. So, so yeah, she is uh, she's an athlete. In uh, in that system, we're we're yeah, we're here. I, I am here. How we doing? I, I don't want people to think that I'm you know at home doing this. No, I'm actually here in, in the stadium. Yeah, the setup is so right. good that that if you can't see Everett because of the monitor <laughs> and the camera, and that also tells you Everett's probably having a tough time yeah. seeing the field. <laughs> it's so funny, Darren. Obviously, me calling college of Charleston basketball. I'm sure you probably got it as well in all your roles of play by play. When you tell people, you know. What I do, they're like, wait, so you go to all the games? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much how it works. I can't sit on my couch while. Yeah, see? <laughs> there see? Yeah, so see. Hi. There, ever, you can see, so there's Everett. <laughs> <laughs> so. You make it work, though. <laughs> yes, we make it work. And speaking of making it work, Berkeley needs to make it work on this opening drive to keep that momentum they had going on there at the end of the second half. And if you're Goose Creek, Now's not the time to let up. That defense needs to get back to what they were doing in the first half, excuse me, the first quarter, and forcing some three and outs. First two times Berkeley had the ball, they netted a total of 11 yards. Then they went 62 yards for a touchdown, and now they'll start at the 20. So the offense started to get in rhythm. Then they had about a 30-yard drive before turning it over with 15 seconds left, just trying to push it down the field. Unofficially, Goose Creek outgained Berkeley 174-103 in that first half. Of the 174 for Goose Creek, a large majority, let's put it in the 150 range, was Simmons with a couple of the three touchdowns. Well, it's really been who's on the quarter. Goose Creek on the first quarter, jumped out 21-0. Berkeley uh, controlled the second quarter, able to score the only points in that quarter. So let's see who's going to control the third quarter. And Berkeley just needs to give themselves a chance uh, here late against a very good Goose Creek team. Gadsden the motion, man. The middle not there for Taylor Jenkins. Good to see 35, the linebacker out there for Goose Creek, Marabella. He was injured late in the first half. He did walk off under his own power, but good to see him out there to start here. That discipline again as you see Jalen Richardson in on the stop. When you have that type of body to clog up the middle, that makes it so much easier for those uh, linebackers, those th defensive Lyman of the Gators doing a great job of not allowing uh, that Berkeley offensive line to get to the second level. This ball's on the ground, and Goose Creek's got it. Chris Russell Holmes falls on it. Second time the Stags have put it on the ground. First time they've lost it, and the Stags give up field position to the Gators at their own 15. Look at Jalen Richardson in the middle. He blew it up, and the play had no chance from the start. He is causing so much havoc there in the middle. That quarterback center exchange is just not clean. And Again, that front four of Goose Creek doing a great job of getting penetration, pushing that offensive line into the backfield, and it's throwing everything off for the Stags. Only about a handful of passes thrown for the junior Moore in the first half. It'll be Simmons here navigating through traffic and pushing his way down inside of the five-yard line. Talking about running behind your pads. Great job by Simmons just following his blocker. Had those two big guys pulling uh, from the right to the left and just leading him into the end zone as we take a look here. Just a good job. Look at those pulling guards. Okay, or maybe we won't look at the pulling <laughs> guards, but the pulling guards just doing a great job leading Simmons down the field. But now can they lead him into the end zone? Yeah, they backed up that defensive line into the end zone. Third Trident Technical College touchdown of the night for Simmons. Your future, your college. Two plays after the fumble recovery. It's 27-7. He just does such a great job of setting up. He allows those linemen to get their blocks. He's just patient. Just It's almost like he stops. As he just kind of takes his time, stop, okay, there's the hole, bam, I'm in there. Touchdown, and once again, untouched. He's getting uh, four or five yards down the field before he's even being touched by a defender. You can't say enough about the job this offensive line has done tonight, and obviously a big night for Demetrius Simmons as he's getting close to 20 rushing touchdowns on the season. I think he's at, what, 15 right now. 
He's at 15 now with his three tonight. He was averaging well over 200 yards a game prior to that Somerville game when everything got bottled up. But he is back in rhythm tonight, and there's there's no question about that. And if you weren't with us at the half, also the scholar athlete for the Gators with a 3-4 GPA. And the timeout on the field is an injury timeout. There is a stag down in the end zone where that play happened, where the line got all the push and you saw bodies falling down. That's one of them. I can just look at Dimitri uh, Simmons, and I can tell either his mom, dad, Mima, grandma, they ain't having that. If you don't get it done in the classroom, the only football you could be playing is on the desk where you slide the football, <laughs> paper football. You can just look at that young man, student athlete. That's what it's all about, getting it done in the classroom and also on the field. A job well done by that young man. You know, coming in there, and he carried the ball 92 times, 900 yards. I mean, just getting it done. And, again, tonight, he's probably close to, I'd say, at least 20 carries. Approaching 200 yards, rushing three yep. touchdowns. I thought it was going to be the aerial attack of Goose Creek, but tonight, why throw it when you can just give the ball to Mr. Simmons? Owen oh, Murchison was the one who was slow to get up and then limped off the field. It's a big turn of events for the Gators, yeah. though. I mean, they, they were dominant the first few times they had it. And then Berkeley, as Everett pointed out, pretty much dominated that second quarter, even forced a three and out. Stags jump here. I see this more at the high school level than at other levels, particularly in the pros. If you saw it clearly, they'd take the penalty. For the extra point, if there is a defensive penalty prior to the snap, nine times out of ten, they decline it. Don't know what the logic is behind there because, I mean, it's not like you're barely getting it over the – you know, goal pulse, but again, it's good. And a 28-7 lead for Jason Winstead. He's won 11 of his 14 region games, now in his fourth year leading the Gators. Famous chant that we always hear when we come to Goose Creek. Homecoming, that always good. You have homecoming, people coming back to... See the football team, and I know next week, Darren, we're at West Ashley, Ashley Ridge. Speaking of homecomings, it's West Ashley's homecoming, but also, as we found out uh, earlier today, talking with Joe Marion, who is the uh, linebackers coach mm -hmm. here at Goose Creek, his brother Bobby Marion, longtime head coach, I believe the first head coach in West Ashley football uh, history when it started is now a tight ends coach at Ashley Ridge. So homecoming for him next week is he'll be going back to West Ashley and <laughs> we're looking forward to that game. That is a homecoming of sorts. Yeah. No doubt about that. Interesting. Ashley Ridge has a great defense. And West Ashley's got one of the more talented running backs in the area. Him and Demetrius Simmons, who we're watching tonight. Those are two names at the top of a lot of lists. That'll be next Friday night on QFS Transportation. Friday night rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Can't take it out of the end zone at the high school level if the kickoff flies in, so they'll start at the 20. And when you see Demetrius Simmons, or Dimitri Simmons, run the football a couple times tonight, Darren, I've been close to calling him Demetrius Summers, who was an outstanding running back at South Carolina back in the day when Lou Holtz was the coach and had somewhat of a troubled career, but an outstanding. I mean, when he was at Lexington High School, I mean, Darren, he was like a man amongst boys. Um, set all types of records and you know, thought he was going to be the saving grace you know, up in Columbia and just just couldn't quite you know get it together. But uh, every, every time I see Dimitri Simmons, I'm tempted to say Demetrius Summers. Don't feel bad. I said it last week <laughs> during the game. <laughs> Whether or not anyone caught it, it did happen. That's Kavarian Brown dropping Waits Wilson. A uh, loss of about five, maybe even six. So this offensive line, they've got to get get it going again. The penetration from this defense. This game from his defensive end position. Right now, they're just almost daring the Stags to throw the football. You mentioned it earlier, Darren. You can almost see every defender for Goose Creek in, in this one shot. Uh, now you can. 
with the exception of one. Yeah, this is not the offense you want to run when you're unfortunately behind by three touchdowns. And looking at second and 15 from your own 15. They'll get a little breathing Whoa. room. Now more. Breaking free is Jenkins. And Jenkins is into Goose Creek territory and caught from behind as he closes in on the 35-yard line. There you go for the third time tonight. Just when I say it, the very next play, the Berkeley Stags, they show me that, hey, we're still in this. A big run, almost like a bowling ball right up the middle, just short. Kept those legs going and a nice run by the Stags inside Goose Creek territory. And again, sometimes there when you're short, it pays to be short. You hide behind those big offensive linemen. They can't find you until it's too late, and he's in the secondary. 50 yards for Taylor Jenkins. And down to the 35 are the Stags. This time it's Reggie Campbell, and Campbell is bottled up. Kavarian Brown, check it, it's Isaiah Addison along with Brown who was in there. Darren, I've only seen the highlights of uh, Citadel football over the past couple of years, but I'm guessing, is this the same offense that the Citadel runs? It is. It's it's the same basic idea. The Citadel has more flexibility with theirs. They can do, they can do a little more when they're functioning right. gotcha. <laughs> the right way. This is a little bit pared down, as you'd expect. They've been yeah. limited in right. practice. They're playing just their third game. And they're high school kids. Yes. Not uh, collegians. Here's Face mask. Wilson, yeah, you, you saw him get spun around and three flags come in. Jalen Richardson is the one who had hands up high. Come here. Come here. That was almost a no-brainer. Well, she said he definitely got that head turned. Obviously not an intentional play by the Gators, but it will result in 15 additional yards for... The Stags and the Stags getting closer to that red zone. As you see the face mask there. I think my man Jalen Richardson was the guilty party. But in these situations, Darren, when you're trailing by, you know, three touchdowns, you kind of have to watch that clock, mm -hmm. you know, so you almost have to try to score as quickly as you can and leave yourself an opportunity to have multiple possessions here in the second half. Taylor Jenkins, the one who broke the big run on this drive, back to the line of scrimmage. The penalty, by the way, gave him another Millermont College first down, proudly supporting the Low Country's high school sports. Give Jenkins a yard to the 17 there. Starting to see some hands on the hips. The Goose Creek defenders didn't see a lot of that in the first, nope. in the, uh, you know, the first quarter. But give credit to Berkeley if not giving up there. Just continuing to play and hoping something good happens. The fumble is the difference here. The reason it's a three-score game, it's on the ground again, and Gadsden may have yeah. gotten it. Wow, between four black jerseys, Gadsden comes up maybe with the play of the day for Berkeley as it continues this drive for them. And it's almost like on that pitch, Darren, it's like it's not as expected because of lack of practice in games. It's like he's having to stop to get it instead of kind of like and he's taking his eyes off of the ball. So you have to secure the ball first, turn your head up the field, then go. So this is the second time tonight that we've seen uh, Cam put the ball on the ground. Come here. Big break for the Stags. That ball slipped right under two or three Gator jerseys. And this is where that mental toughness comes into play that Jerry Brown uh, spoke about. Late pitch, and Gadsden's able to pick it off his back shoulder and dart towards the pylon. Touchdown, Stags. There's a flag down at the five. Oh, is that holding against Troy Reed? He kind of put his hands up saying, not me, which usually means it was you. <laughs> so let's see if the call is maybe against Troy Reed, the guilty party. Ten yards from the spot. They're actually going to gain a couple overall, but wipe out six. Yeah, let's see. Is it right there, maybe? Mm -hmm. I didn't look like a hold. So we're not sure who the – he didn't indicate who the guilty party was. So that, unfortunately, negates what would have been six points for the Stags. So now a third and long coming up. 
Let's see what Dr. Brown can go into his bag of tricks to see what he can come up with to pick up at least 10 yards. He goes through the middle. He goes with Campbell. And he's got about five, so it'll be fourth and two. That was the first time we saw Gadsden really have space to get to his fifth gear. Right. We haven't seen him go that quick all night. It's also the first time he's been able to get that deep without being touched. Yeah. Those guys have been having to get yards after contact, and that time a pretty clear alley for him. And, Darren, i got to tell you, I've been calling Jalen Richardson. So I thought it was 96, but that's actually 98. Do you have a 98 on your roster? I think you're right in thinking that it was 96. Okay. Now what a break for Berkeley, a personal foul against Goose Creek. So an automatic first down. Keep an eye on Isaiah Addison, number 11 in the black jersey. Okay, so you knocked him down. And, yep, oh. yeah, you can't do that, my friend. So, Malik, <laughs> that is not Addison. <laughs> that was 11 on Berkeley who got hit. Right. So it's Malik Roper. Yeah, you can't be going around bopping people upside the head, even though you were retaliating, but the second man always gets caught. Here's Campbell. We got whistles. Whistle not set. <laughs> Choppiest of the drives all night for either side. But more importantly, if you're Berkeley, it's just taking more and more time off the clock. I think they're they're okay, especially if this ends in points. They'll be fine with that. Provided that the defense can force a couple of three and outs yeah. for Berkeley. But they've kind of shown tonight they've had difficulties uh, stopping Simmons. And if I'm Jason Winstead and you see that this Berkeley team is starting to get a little momentum, I'm just going to run the ball, run the ball, and just keep that clock moving. It is first down and goal from about the 10. Reggie Campbell maybe has two or three, 35. Marabella's in there. Isaiah Addison, 11's right there as well. Also, Jaden Johnson, the 6'4 giant, kind of right in the middle of all of that pile for the Gators. Busy night for Johnson. He is a Howard commit, the starting center for Goose Creek as well. It just looked like the difference between Jaden Johnson, number 70, and then I believe that's <laughs> uh, is that Brown next to him on the end? Right there, right to his left. 11 is Addison. Is that 30? Oh, good block. Yeah, Wilson is grabbed by Johnson. And here's another late flag. Yeah, that was a, a great block from Berkeley. Looks like it's maybe Reginald Campbell. A lot, like you mentioned, there are a lot of penalties here in the third quarter, which normally you get that early on because you kind of feel like these guys have gotten into a rhythm, but not so much on this drive. Oh, man. So it's starting to get a little chippy. They offset it was after the play is over. So that second down play does count for a pickup of three. Yeah, man, that's a big hit. It was the bottom of your screen. There was a little pushing. And Malik Roper laying the, laying the wood to the runner. And now third down and nine coming up. About a four and a half minute drive that started at their own 20, then backed up to their own 15. And a 50-yard run sprung him. Here's Stevens. Ooh. He's not getting sprung. He's getting lit by Malik Roper. So Malik Roper, of course, had the penalty earlier on. But in the last two plays, he has come up with some bone-crushing hits. A nice stop. It was a right read by Wilson. Pitched it kind of high. And, yeah, I'm surprised that Cam was able to hold on to that one because he kind of knew he was about to get popped. But give him credit for being able to keep his eye on the football, secure it, and then absorb that big hit. Stags are going to go for the score here instead of attempting the three. Down by 21. It's fourth and goal and a timeout for the Stags to think about it here a little bit. We'll step aside. 28-7, fourth down and goal coming up for the Stags from the nine on QFS Transportation Friday Night Rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet.
28-7, Goose Creek leads. Berkeley takes a timeout, facing fourth and goal from the nine. They come out of the timeout. They're ready to go for it again. Trying to go 80 yards and cap this drive off. Wilson's ball may have been deflected there. They'll turn it over on downs. A good idea, but just couldn't quite execute the play. Tried to catch those guys sleeping. Looked like he was trying to get that receiver that was split up to the top of the field. But you're right there. And just based on the flight of the football, somebody must have got those paws up and tipped it. Yep. Yep. Looked like Baron Ravenel. So good job by the Goose Creek Gators. Man, but don't break. Came up with the stop that they needed, and now offense back on the field. I kind of have a feeling this is going to be Mr. Uh, Simmons' time. It's basically the first time they've touched it. They ran two plays after taking a fumble at the 15 and scored. Simmons picks his way for about seven, gets to the third level, and they stopped there by Storm Judy, number 40. It's a run. They'll officially mark him with eight. Yeah. Ernest Weatherford Jr. also on the stop, and it was good to see five white jerseys there on the stop. You'd like to see that gang tackling going on by the Stags. Simmons, his center Johnson, pulls for him, helps pave the way for a first down. Brought to you by Miller Mott College, proudly supporting the Low Country's high school sports. Uh, 70 might be the most impressive player in the game other than Simmons with what he's do, done on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, and that's the one that's going to Howard. You said James that is, yeah. correct. Here's Simmons again. And Shine Gillian. Not for a while there. I don't know if he's still there. Maybe entered the transfer portal, but Cam Newton's little brother was the quarterback at Howard. Yes. I'm not sure if he is still there, but, yeah, he definitely was. I remember it was like two years ago. Remember they, I think they defeated like UNLV or something on the road, and he was the, the quarterback. Howard, obviously one of the more prestigious HBCUs. UNLV now with one of the longest losing streaks in the country, along with Arizona and UMass. New ball that carry. was Kenny Johnson. Yeah, his second carry. He gets a couple when Simmons needs a breath. <laughs> yeah, he, that's his 20th carry of the year. He does have 90 yards. Hadn't scored a touchdown yet, but as you said, when you're backing up somebody like Demetri Simmons, <laughs> you're only getting it when he needs a blow. Yeah, you're not getting it at the goal line when Simmons is going to be there. But you'll get it again here. Needing two yards, and it will depend on the spot whether or not the junior Kenny Johnson has a first down for the Gators. But they're getting a left foot spot, which is always good when you're going right to left. So it looks like it's going to be another uh, first down for the Gators. Miller Mott College first down. In fact, proudly supporting the Low Country's high school sports. How about the Gators in the Jumpman jerseys? I don't think I've seen a high school yet with the uh, Jumpman uniforms. Very nicely done. They're sharp, aren't they? And Levine's got the gloves to go with it. He, he's got it's turquoise gloves that don't match the uniform, but for some reason, in my eyes, they work. He catches everything thrown towards him, so we are seeing a lot of the guys tonight wearing pink. Obviously, October is Breast Cancer Awareness mm -hmm. Month, so good to see those guys recognizing Breast Cancer Awareness. Here's Simmons. <laughs> Simmons gets another block there. That frees him for 15, maybe even 16, as he's eventually spun down. Love to be Steven in. Graham got him. Love to be in that running back room. Like, hey, listen, I'm going to carry the ball 30 times. I'm going to let you get about two or three so I can catch my breath, and then I'm coming back in. So I'm going to get too uh, happy back there. But just I love watching this guy run. He almost kind of glides mm -hmm. across the field as he's running. Kind of reminds me of back when Barry Sanders back in the day. Davian Malloy, the receiver, sharing the love from the carry standpoint. Third consecutive Miller Mott College first down. This one picks up 14. Not only does Simmons run the football, but he blocks as well as on that last play. He did a nice job of freeing up the receivers. We have an injured player down. Look at Simmons here. Lead blocker, follow me. And a good job by the Gators. Injury timeout, Stephen Graham, who was around the sideline, 
when Malloy went out of bounds. He's up. He kind of jogged his way all the way back across the field to the Berkeley sideline. Goose Creek's ready to run the next play. Is it me or my glasses are really working well tonight? Are the numbers on these jerseys larger than normal? I mean, I don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm very appreciative, but it seems like they're just huge. This is an odd press box where even though it's low, very low, it also gives you a good view of a Kion Smith touchdown on a beautifully dropped-in ball from Drew Moore. Yeah, somebody definitely bit on that pump fake and a beautiful pass from Drew Moore for the touchdown. Kion Smith, the lead receiver for the Gators this year. It's now with his sixth touchdown of the year, but you see the pump fake and just, again, puts air under it. Perfect ball. Dropped it right in the bread basket. Touchdown, Gators. 26 yards. Caps a ho-hum, nine-play, 90-yard drive in about two and a half minutes. Just efficient, effective. <laughs> Run it, throw it. There's not much that this Goose Creek offense can't do tonight. Jason Winstead told Trooper Bob at the half, well, we scored 21 points as in the Gators. There's no reason Berkeley can't score 21 and a quarter. True. But they can also put 21 or more up in another quarter. And they've got 14. Here, yeah. check it, 13. That one just missed. Yep, the extra point was no good. So the Gators, quick strike offense. And you look at Smith, he came in averaging nearly 20 yards per catch. Of course, when you have that type of size, yeah, you just kind of go up and grab it. And when you have a quarterback like Drew Moore that can complete passes, pinpoint precision, that was a nice throw. And again, that pump fake got that guy in the secondary to kind of bite on it. And it must have been like a stop and go. Route. We couldn't really see the route that was ran. We just saw him wide open in the end zone. <laughs> but it worked. And the Gators cruising. This is what makes Goose Creek's offense one of the better ones in the area. To be honest, it's them in Fort Dorchester, the best offenses in the area. Because you've got a multi-dimensional offense. And not just the ability to succeed in both ways, but the ability to dominate a game with two very good receivers and a good quarterback and Dimitri Simmons. So you've got you've got dudes in, in all of those spots. By the way, Goose Creek plays for Dorchester. That's next what I was week. just looking up. Yes. Great minds must think alike. About a 19-yard return. That'll put Berkeley at the 20. Yeah, actually, Goose Creek's got four games after this, and they only have one home game, the last one of this season i guess they play stratford twice because they have stratford here on october the uh it, that's still on the schedule that you can find max prep wise right. I, I don't think it's happening gotcha but it but it could this year right because they play fort dorchester as you mentioned next week then cane bay on october 15th and then wando on october 22nd Berkeley marched all the way down to the nine and then turned it over on downs the last time they had it. They'll start with a gain of a yard in the arms of their quarterback here, Waits Wilson. Just a tough night for the Stags, just running the ball outside of a few plays. They really have not been able to have any gaps, any lanes, anything to really come up with big chunk plays. And, you know, normally if you're getting three yards, three yards, three yards, or four yards in a first down, that's fine. But... As we've mentioned several times tonight, when you fall behind by, uh, you know, 27 points, it makes it difficult to come back with that uh, type of offense. At this point for the Stags, it's as much about growth and experience right. here. I mean, timing. Yeah, you'd love to win the game, right? But, yeah, timing as well. Gadsden able to corral that, then slip through a couple tackles and almost was able to put that speed back on display for the second time had he not been pushed out. It looked like it was Maury and Scott. Man, I love the fight of this Berkeley offense. They're not giving up, not worried about the scoreboard. They're just continuing to play. And a big, solid run that time. Got around on the outside. And Luke Gatson, he's been a workhorse tonight for this Berkeley offense and has uh, been very uh, positive and just looked good 
kind of leading the rushing attack and giving this Berkeley offense a little bit of life. 19 yards for the Millamont College first down run from Gadsden. Oof, that's a hit that you could hear from up here. You're right, there's a 98 down there that's not on our roster. Unless that was the jersey again bunched up at Jalen Richardson. Also feasible. Well, whoever 98 is, he's a big dude. And he is not letting the ball carrier get away from him. Yeah, it's definitely 98. You put him in a long, uh, if you were to put Jaden Johnson and also uh, I think Chris Russell Holmes. That's, that's some big bodies up front. Final play of this third quarter. Speaking of Chris Russell Holmes, one of the big guys up front, the 240-pound senior ends the quarter and sends us to the final 12 minutes. 34-7, the Gators lead, trying to get to 2-0 and in region play on QFS Transportation Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Here with Ken French, Cruise Chevrolet, North Charleston. You've got a friend in the car business. <laughs> You've got a friend here at Cruise Chevrolet. Uh, why, in, uh, why is it year in, year out that you guys are helping out with Friday Night Rivals and high school football? Uh, well, it, it all comes from our owner, Robert Cruz, and his wife, Kelly. Uh, they want to give back to the community. It's something that we do. And, uh, you know, we started the You've Got a Friend in the Car Business when we opened the Chevy store. And... Um, it has taken on a life of its own, and so with us doing so much in the community, it really rings true when you do that. The whole community's got a friend in the car business, and uh, we support a lot of stuff on the McDonald House, uh, Carolina Youth Development, the Low Country Food Bank. We have a, a lot of things that we do, especially with blood drives. And giving back is very good for the community. <laughs> As we say goodbye, i got to let you say it. You've got a friend in the car business on Rivers, just north of Northwoods Mall. That is it a costume? Is it an outfit? I don't I don't know what it is for a mascot. It's not a uniform. The uniform is on the costume. Anyway, it looks new and clean. Yeah, he hasn't played tonight. No, <laughs> no, he hasn't played tonight. But he looks sharp. We go to the fourth quarter. Darren Goldwater, Everett German. It's a 34-7 lead for Goose Creek. Unofficially, they've outgained them by about 105 yards, 279 to 174. And it's not counting what they've got on this drive, which is about 20. They got to score, and they got to score fast. It's third and 10, and Gadsden's going the wrong way towards his end zone. He's going the other way, and Addison had a hand to that jersey. Yeah, it's never good when you got four black jerseys in the backfield, your running back, and then all of your offensive linemen nowhere around. So that was not a good play by the offensive linemen for Berkeley. And give credit to Goose Creek right now. They are just owning the line of scrimmage, and that's why the Stags will be forced to punt once again. If you're watching and you see the score, you might be surprised to know this is just the second time Berkeley is punting tonight. And if he even gets it off, somehow he did, Sanchez. Barely. And he's going to net around 10 yards. But it's better than Goose Creek getting it at 20. So you got two guys <laughs> practically on top of the punter. And somehow I'll give him credit for being able to get the punt off and at least not allow a, a punt block and a potential uh, scoop and score. 
Kion Smith, yeah, the receiver, Smith, is right there. It's almost like when you're that close to you, just a natural instinct to, like, stop or pause instead of running through the play. But once again, excellent field position. And now if you're the Berkeley Stack defense, you're just playing for pride. Like, don't give up a one-play big run to Simmons where you can take it in. Don't worry about the scoreboard. Mm -hmm. Continue to play. Learn from this game. And, again, kind of keep that momentum getting better each and every week uh, through the rest of the season. Giving Goose Creek a short field at the 45. Simmons takes advantage, hopping to the outside for an a &I fire and water restoration first down, making your house home again after disaster strikes. And on the stop, it was Ernest Weatherford. He looked like the Easter Bunny on that one with all that hopping and stopping and shifting and changing direction. Just very impressed with Simmons tonight. Simmons gets a huge hole to run through and explodes down close to the 10. Another first down run for Dimitri Simmons. Yeah. I mean, you just can't say enough about the offensive line. When you're running, you know, 15 yards where you're even touched. As you see the hole right here, set up the block. Good job. Just explodes up the middle. And once again, someone in the secondary having to make the stop against Simmons. This offense is unstoppable right now, and Simmons bulldozes his way in for another Goose Creek touchdown. Trident Technical College, your future, your college. Three plays, 45 yards, and a commanding 40-7 to seven Goose Creek patience, lead. Patience, patience. Cruise, cruise, cruise. Put that foot down and explode right into the end zone. He's been doing it all night long. It's been a long time since I've seen a, a uh, high school running back have that type of patience, that, that type of ability to allow the blocks to kind of set up and then find that open hole. Very impressive for Simmons. All five or 45 of those yards, tack those on to Dimitri Simmons' night. How about this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The last eight plays that Goose Creek has run right. have either been first downs or touchdowns. I said that's pretty efficient. That's, 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 that's dominating. Nope. I could make that more impressive. Hang on. One, two, three, four. Hey, I, I, let me just do easier math than yeah. actually counting them. That would be 11, and 3 is 14. Of the last 14 plays that Goose Creek has run, 11 of yeah. the 14 have either been first downs or touchdowns. In, in, in the words of Larry the Cable Guy, <laughs> that's getting her done. Yeah, it is. That is getting her done, making the most of their opportunities. <laughs> Um, and just a machine. Man, my first time seeing Goose Creek, though, man, they can throw it, they can run it. Simmons has to be tired. Maybe he'll tap the younger guy and say, okay, my night's done. I'll go ahead and let you get a couple of uh, a carries here tonight. Second touchdown of this half for Simmons, who also had two in the first half. He's got two six touchdown games this year. So four is like your average day at the office. He must have. This offense is 320 some odd yards. Simmons definitely is in the 250 range. So easy. And four touchdowns. Yeah. He's, he's got to be the Darren Goldwater player of the week with those types of numbers. And again, the fact that this will be his, what you say, third game with having four or more touchdowns in it, very impressive. And like we said, continue this production, keep it up. And there's no question. If his goal is to play at the next level, whatever that level is, whatever college it is, if his goal is that, if he keeps this up, that is a very, very attainable goal. And the one thing that just really stands out that I'm sure college coaches will appreciate is the way he sets up those blocks. Like, he's very patient. He, You know, uh, Zeke does a good job of Zeke Elliott with the Cowboys. Like, he doesn't just run to the hole. He kind of sets it up, takes his time, kind of surveys, and then he explodes. That's something you don't often see in high school running backs, so that will transition well to the next level, whatever level that is, uh, if he gets the opportunity to play on Saturdays. Gadsden was the motion man. Ravenel into the backfield to wrap Jenkins. I'm going to give him about two. We mentioned it earlier, Darren, as we take a look at the replay here, that quick give to the fullback and a nice tackle uh, you know, by Ravenel. This Goose Creek team undefeated at home. They're averaging 50 points a game at home. Nothing has changed. This is just what people do. This is just what Goose Creek does to teams when they come 
to the creek. Slow developing play, but Gadsden finds a seam and bursts for a first down, and he's still going. Gadsden down the sidelines, you betcha. Gadsden's going to make it. No quitting that young man. We talked about on the last drive. He looks exhausted. He should be. <laughs> but to outrun the entire defense, and you, you'd love that. If you're Jerry Brown, those are the types of things that you can build on. It's fourth quarter, you're down. Obviously, you're not going to win the game, and there is no quit in Gaston. He just simply uh, just runs through tackles. No one really put a hand on him, took toe down the sideline, and then just outran the, uh, the secondary and into the end zone. Buda Wheatley. Got his arm on him, if not two arms on him. 68-yard touchdown run there for Luke Gadsden, a Trident Technical College touchdown. Your future, your college, continuing to build on the foundation that Jerry Brown is trying to lay in another stint with the Stags. But it's all Goose Creek on QFS Transportation Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Sixty-eight yard touchdown run for Luke Gadsden as the Stags in the end zone for the second time with about nine and a half minutes to play here at Goose Creek. And a pretty dominant day for this Goose Creek offense. They've been helped as well. Their touchdowns this half. Their first one started at the 15-yard line after recovering a fumble. Their second one went 90 yards and nine plays. And their most recent one, three plays, touchdown from 45 yards because they had it in good field position after a bad punt. Berkeley answered that one with the 68-yard touchdown run. And that has us where we are here, 41-14. Creek trying to go to 4-2 and 2-0 and in the region. And this is only Berkeley's third game. They are one and one. Like halfway through the year, they're one and one. Yeah, Berkeley's got Wando next week, and then Ashley Ridge, Stratford, and Kane Bay. So still four games left. And so, yeah, if you're Jerry Brown and the Stags, you just want to build and be able to finish this season strong. Here's Maury and Scott reversing field, and he's got some blockers out in front of him. Grabbed up at the shoulder pads. There's the flag. Took a minute to get it out of the hip pocket, but Stephen Graham clearly grabbed up around the collar. Yeah, we start obviously outlawed. A lot of people, some serious injuries, being horse collared, usually from behind. Not one one necessarily from behind, but definitely got in the jersey. So be able to tack on 15 more. Nice run. Whew. Got a block in the back instead. Oh, yeah. Illegal flag is the indication against the Gators. Let's get you your Cruz Chevrolet drive of the game. You got a friend in the car business at Cruz Chevrolet. So many long drives all night, Darren, for this Goose Creek 
team, but I guess the one is the short where kind of a combination of defense and offense. Defense gets the turnover, then the offense able to cap it off with the run here by Simmons for almost a touchdown. This play, he caps off the drive. Those were three of the offensive plays in the last 14 group that I just mentioned. 11 of the last 14 plays run by Goose Creek's offense have either been first downs or touchdowns. And the extended pause after that drive of the game package, again, brought to you by Cruz Chevrolet. You have a friend in the car business at Cruz Chevrolet is for this injury here, and it is a scary one. You hope he's just uh, dehydrated or not sure what's going on. We'll step aside as they attend to Storm Judy. Here with Ken French, Cruise Chevrolet, North Charleston. You've got a friend in the car business. <laughs> You've got a friend here at Cruise Chevrolet. Uh, why, in, uh, why is it year in, year out that you guys are helping out with Friday Night Rivals and high school football? Uh, well, it, it all comes from our owner, Robert Cruz, and his wife, Kelly. Uh, they want to give back to the community. It's something that we do. And, uh, you know, we started the You've Got a Friend in the Car Business when we opened the Chevy store. And... Um, it has taken on a life of its own. And so with us doing so much in the community, it really rings true when you do that. The whole community's got a friend in the car business and uh, we support a lot of stuff around McDonald House, uh, Carolina Youth Development, the Low Country Food Bank. We have a, a lot of things that we do, especially with blood drives. And giving back is very good for the community. <laughs> As we say goodbye, I gotta let you say it. You've got a friend in the car business on Rivers, just north of Northwoods Mall. Storm Judy was kind of absolutely so as they carried him off the field and we are ready for action here on a quick slant and another first down or touchdown as Kion Smith pulls away 75 yards for more to Smith than another Goose Creek Trident Technical College touchdown. Your future, your college. Yeah, so much for trying to just run the clock out as Jason Winstead still throwing the ball, still playing football, allowing his passing game to get going. Here and now I can see why Simmons is averaging nearly, uh, I mean, uh, Smith nearly 20 yards per catch. As that was, a, again, just a skinny post, hit him in stride. Didn't have to break his stride and just simply outran the secondary of the Stags. That's like a sprinter just pulling away and dusting people. You know, before that, his longest touchdown reception on the season was 80 yards, so that one was only 75. So, but a bit, work, nice catch. work harder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For those five yards. Run backwards when you catch it, circle around, and then go forward for your 75 yards. Time for our Limerick Heating and Air cool play of the game. Called today, comfortable tonight, Limerick Heating and Air cool play of the game. Which one's it going to be? It's going to be the interception there towards the end of the first half from Jordan Turner. Yeah, nice job of just stepping in, getting in between the ball and the receiver. Kind of jumped that route, and that was on a fourth down play, but a nice drive-stopping interception for the Gators. You saw momentarily there, a quick shot at the sideline. That was Storm Judy who fell down as you saw it. They're working on him on the bench. Relatively cool night here. Football weather slowly but surely coming here. Still not quite ready for the pullovers and the, you know, sweat sweatshirts. But La last there. week, you know, we, we flirted with some actual fall temp after it rain for what felt like ever last right. week then the rain went away and then by the end of the week for our game last week and then the bridge run it was cool at night i, w I wore pants for the bridge right. run and long sleeves i haven't done that in months i gotta tell you anybody that knows me knows bridge and run have nothing to do with me but i must admit <laughs> you guys killed it last week you and uh dean and obviously the whole team at at channel four with that bridge run coverage and i mean just getting paid to run the watch people run. It's a pretty good gig, I must admit. 
Uh, I joked with a lot of people when, when I said I'm doing the bridge run. You're doing it? I mean, <laughs> if I say I'm doing any type of yeah. game or an event, I'm probably not actually yeah. part- I'm I'm doing this. I'm talking. Yeah. Me and six miles running don't go together. Yeah. At all. For me to get six miles of running in, you need to, that's probably about a year's worth of running for me. Oh, at least. Oh, now, uh, unfortunately, is that Cam? Now, Cam is limping off as well. Cam Stevens, the two way yes. player, offense, defense, leader of this stag football team. At least he's able to walk off on his own. But you have to wonder, Darren, only having two games in, you know. Limited practicing, it's just everything probably starting to kind of rise to the top in terms of issues and challenges for this Berkeley team. As if they haven't dealt with enough throughout the year. Looked like a little bit of a face mask there as Taylor Jenkins had the carry. You could see it on the monitor. You probably couldn't see it with. Another five-man officiating crew. Yeah, it's been it's been a tough night here for the Stags, injury-wise. And that's one thing, you know, through sports you learn about dealing with adversity. And things aren't always going to be easy. And obviously Jerry Brown, who's coached for 50 years, um, he's seen it all. And this, again, will just be a teaching moment for the Stags. That is your end zone scissor lift provided by Reliable equi Equipment. We rent the good stuff. Remember when you, you saw... Me at the half, and we tried to show you Everett, but he's got a monitor and a, and a camera and a tripod in front of him. Just waving <laughs> like she's in the uh, the parade, the beauty parade, or was it the homecoming parade? Where uh -huh. kinda, it's, it's you, different you, waves, you know? You, you like the hand turning, yeah. not, not the actual, hey, what's up, just the the beauty wave. Well, mad props to her for just being up in that lift. That high, that's not a job for me. Sarah. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Doing a we great un job. We understand from Nick Case, our, our producer and director, that Sarah loves being up there. She's doing a fantastic job. Obviously, my first time, Darren, joining you, and I'll be with you the rest of the season. And great, great crew. Everybody was nice and friendly and welcoming. Well, yeah. now that Dean's gone, we figured we'd be nice. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> <it's> just, <laughs> but in all honesty... Dean Stevens means a lot to both of us. Yes. And congratulations on a retirement. It's well earned. We miss you around here, but I'm sure you're having fun whatever you're doing, not watching. Here is Waits Wilson for about three yards there on second down. Yeah, they always say you, you don't want to replace the legend. You want to be the guy that replaced, that replaced the legend. So I'm in the wrong seat. But, again, yeah, Dean, a great guy and a staple in the community and, you know, it's kind of hard to think about, you know, Channel 4 not thinking Dean Stevens. But yeah. congratulations to him. And, yeah, uh, yeah like I said, I, I got kind of in his business with Dean. I was, in a, I was a junior over at Wando High School. And did, well, that's when Dean was working in sports. And did an internship with Mr. Stevens. It's crazy how many of those stories surfaced last week. Or this week, I guess. It feels like it's been a while. <laughs> Here's Waits. Oh. And Wilson's oh. in trouble and going the wrong yes. way oh. into the arms of Kaverian Brown. Brown's had a big night tonight, and Wilson got tossed to the ground pretty hard. Landed, looked like he landed on his shoulder, and looks like he's still down. He is. Because he tried, I'm sure he had his arm cocked to like really throw the football, and yeah, he, he hit the ground hard. And has only moved slightly since. Yeah, and I'm sure the... The trainers of Berkeley still attending to the other three stags that were hurt earlier. And it seems like what just when they get to one, you know, someone else, unfortunately, is suffering injuries. You take a look here. You can see, yeah, right there, ooh, on that left shoulder. And it wasn't a fumble. Because he was down by contact, but, yeah. The scariest thing about it is he, he's moved very, very little. From when you last saw him, he's still laying on that right shoulder. You know, and again, this Berkeley program, if not this year, they're going to be back. I mean, Dr. Jerry Brown, I think of some of the, uh, just some of the athletes, the, the Rusty Williams, the, the Mal Lawyers, um, the Jabbar 
Levy that have mm. come out of, of Berkeley and went on to success either at the collegiate or the high school, or excuse me, the uh, professional level. This is a, pride pro, uh, a prideful program, you know, in, in Monk's Corner. And I used to be the running joke back in the days, hey, if you ever want to rob a house in Monk's Corner, do it on a Friday night <laughs> when, you know, Berkeley has a home game because everybody's at the game. They support their stags. They love their stag football. And it's just a matter of time for Jerry Brown gets this thing running again like it used to back when he was here between 1993 and uh, 2010. Tough part is now, in really the last three, four plays, two of the guys he singled out to me today as consummate leaders, guys you want around the program, guys who have bought in. Two of those have been helped off in the last few plays. This is Wade Wilson. Cam Stevens was a few before that. As Everett mentioned, there's still working with Storm Judy on the sideline as well, who collapsed on the field. It has been what was at one point in the second quarter and towards the half what, what could be a competitive game unfolding, and it's turned into mm-hmm. an unfortunate scene, one that you know the Goose Creek, number one, can't be stopped, and right. then number two, Berkeley's manpower is going down. Well, Darren, you think about it, you go back to that end of the first half. Remember we talked about they were just seemed to be taking so much time. Like they were close and they weren't in field goal range. Mm-hmm. And they just kind of, and they had timeouts and they just kind of like keep going and going. And, you know, obviously throwing the football is not their strength. So that end of the half clock management. As we see a field goal attempt. <laughs> I think it's like a free kicker. I'm trying to remember the rules on that. Because you heard the Goose Creek coaches saying, like, get away. Uh huh. It's gonna, it is the same exact thing, essentially. They're going to get the ball at the 44. I was checking on Storm Judy, who, as we mentioned, had collapsed on the field. The good news to report there is he is at least sitting up on that Berkeley sideline. Our player of the game is not going to be surprising to you reliable equipment we rent the good stuff that's for some reason a tongue twister reliable equipment we (laughs) rent the good stuff dimitri simmons uh well over 200 yards on the ground and four touchdowns as well for the scene i think it's safe to say he's been very reliable Uh tonight for this goose creek offense how about that see what you did there Everett german (laughs) And his night could also very well be done because Kenny Johnson is in for the first play of that series. And I think it's safe to say that you're just going to see a bunch of handoffs here. You know, you don't want to get anybody hurt. And just uh, basically just run the ball up the middle. And if you're Berkeley, just finish the game out. No quit, play to the final, final horn. And just try to make as many positive plays as you possibly can. Kenny Johnson straight ahead. Johnson into the third level. That's an A&I fire and water restoration first down. Making your house home again after disaster strikes to the 35. Yeah, it doesn't really matter who's running the football tonight for Goose Creek. They're having a lot of success. Again, that big hole, the shiftiness of the running back. Uh, Kenny Johnson able to pick up positive yards. And like you mentioned, Darren, once again, they're getting to that second and third level before even being initially, you know, contacting. You just have to think the conditioning just starting to wear down for Berkeley. Conditioning, overall manpower. I mean, just the the guys that they can put out there. They've taken injuries. They've had 25 guys in the recent weeks, months, that have spent at least two weeks in quarantine. 25 yeah. of their roster. I mean, that's... And then that's on the stag. verge of like half a roster, a little bit less than that. Right. Well, a Nick Case, our producer, called for it. Might be time to bring out the old pickle juice, Darren, because it looks like that's just a cramp. And you know the best way to get rid of those cramps is to drink the pickle juice. Have you ever actually drank yes, pickle juice? that's how it came about. So, actually, you, I, and Darren, Darren and Dean were doing the game at Colleton County. Okay. I was working the sidelines at that time. Okay. So, as most people know I, you know I had a kidney transplant 10 years ago. I was going to take my kidney meds. So I walked by the Colleton County bench, and they have their little squirt bottles. Yes. So I asked one of the little girls, trainers, managers, say, hey, can I get some a squirt bottle to take my medicine? <laughs> so I have my medicine in my mouth. I get the, the bottle, and I squirt it because obviously I'm not going to put my mouth on it. 
and oh. it's pickle juice. <laughs> and so the trainer, she looks at me, and she goes, oh, I think I gave you the wrong bottle. <laughs> you, you think? And so I'm like, why? <laughs> why would you have pickle juice in a water bottle? Did you? Could you tell what it was? <laughs> Absolutely. <Okay. laughs> and so that's when she said, oh, that's, you know, to prevent cramping. And, and it was like an August night. It was hot and yeah. steamy. So that's how I learned that, yes, that's the key to uh, cramps, Charlie horses, to drink pickle juice. I mean, I, I've known it. I've heard it Yeah. I, I've for for years. I've just never actually. I can verify. It and worked. I love pickles. <laughs> yeah. I, I love pick. I even did a game at um, Mount Olive, which is a Division II school. And if you're ever looking for pickles in any grocery store, there are Mount Olive pickles. Ah, yeah. yeah. It is where the college is, uh-huh. and I ate pickles on the air in a basketball game to prove that. <laughs> well, <laughs> but I that, didn't drink the juice. That should have been a sideline story. Let's throw it down the ever for our behind. Well, Taryn, no one's cramping up tonight because they're just drinking pickle juice out of the old water bottle. Mm. Yeah, but the, the shock of pickle juice yeah, is, that's is not yeah. the, the tartness. It just. Yeah. Yeah. Prednisone, Celsef, <laughs> and uh, Prograf does not go well with pickle juice. Uh, but Kenny Johnson, he's trying to get to the 100-yard yep. mark. He's trying to get into the end zone, trying to get his, his name in the newspaper for scoring a touchdown. Well, he'll get it in there for another A&I fire and water restoration first down as we work down towards three minutes to go in this game. And a class move right here by Jason Winstead and the Gators. They're letting the play clock run down. They're trying to get as much time off this clock and just basically running the ball up the middle. Yeah, that's nothing fancy. And still, there are holes that can be found as Johnson bursts through a 14-yard run for the junior Kenny Johnson. Has them within striking distance again here just outside the 10-yard line. He's a change of pace running back. 5 9, 170. Kind of that scat back. Again, kind of high behind that big line of scrimmage. And again, he's his feet, good feet by that running back. He's able to kind of shift and get through the hole. And he's smelling the end zone as he's trying to put Goose Creek in the 50s, which will be for the second time this year. But they do have one game where they scored 49 points. That coming against uh, Wilson earlier this season. I think they've marked him at the 10. So it is first and goal. And he's wrapped there by Montario. Let's check it. Thomas Nelson. And I'm, that's where, you know, Darren, you have to always, obviously, Coach Winstead and the Gators not trying to run the score up. But these kids that are on the field right now, they work just as hard Monday through Thursday or Sunday or Saturday through Thursday. <laughs> Whatever high school practice, weeks yeah, are. <laughs> Watch the, their practice schedule. So they deserve to have some success as well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I've always struggled with that where – you know, do you just take a knee or how this works? But, yeah, they're just simply running the ball up the middle. Johnson's trying to get in the end zone. That one took a little while to develop. Is more bobbled the snap. So Johnson's down at the seven. It'll be third down and goal. <laughs> but also there could be a time later on where, let's say, you don't have the services of Simmons. He gets hurt or something happens. At least he'll have those live game reps to be prepared to step in. And it won't be a, a shell shock to him because he will have played, you know, on the season. Kudos to Goose Creek as well. You know They did not play well last week. Jason Winstead said how much his team loves playing on TV. They get another opportunity and a chance at some redemption, and they got it, man. They came out, and they looked great in the first quarter. Simmons was great. Moore has looked good when he's been given the opportunity to put it up in the air. And here's Kenny Johnson, and he adds his name to the box score with a Trident Technical College touchdown. Your future your college for Kenny Johnson. Yeah, nice run. I think Berkeley thought he was going to run up the middle and give him credit. He bounced it to the outside around the right corner and able to get into the end zone. And for the second time this year, or third time this year, well, the Gators have scored 49 points or more in a home game here at the Creek. Simmons has four touchdowns. Kion Smith has two receiving touchdowns. That's actually uh, Kenny Johnson's first touchdown of the season. Coming in, he had 19 carries for you know 90 yards. So congratulations to him. There it is again, by the way. An extra point, defense penalty, offense about to kick an extra point declines. You, I mean, you're turning down a yard and a half, right? You're getting half the distance to the goal. I wonder if a close game, though, 
would you take that and potentially go for two? With that yes. offensive line, if if that's yes. an option, then then that would be an instance to because take. Because of it. situations like that, that can uh, happen. Yes. This is Kion Smith. Here's your fire drill. Yep, just yell fire and just throw it's it up. It's like, oh, look at the block that was just laid, and we're having a flag come out on exactly. top of it. Oh, Lavari Brown. He's only 6'1", 290. He's one of the smaller ones on that front. I mean, that's a lookout block right there. Look out, here I come. So yeah, you, in these situations, you yell fire, and you just you usually just throw it into the end zone and try to make something happen. Yeah. Mm, that one drew a couple of flags. Yeah, that's when you're kind of like, where did that milk truck come from? Because <laughs> you don't see, you know, your head's kind of like on a swivel, and you see that the last minute, and by that time, you know, that the guy's on top of you. So the Gator fans will go home happy tonight. Another... Home win, now 4-0 and on the season. Here at home are the Gators, and 4-2 and Darren, 2-0 and in region play. The goals are in front of them. They're the two-time reigning region champs. They've got Fort Dorchester next week. That's one to keep an eye on. Yeah. Oh, but you got to not knock the coach in the head and give him a concussion. You, you just pour the water on top of him. They, need to, they maybe need to practice that. How to, how to dump the cooler on the coach. So I want to know what I don't know. This is the sixth game of the year. You're 4-2. and two, You're 2-0 two and oh in the region. Yeah, you lost last week. Is that warranting a Gatorade bucket shower? Like, what, what happened tonight that's, that puts that into this level? Well, when Randy Robinson was here, has been a while since Goose Creek beat Berkeley. Of course, I would It's a 35-13 Berkeley lead. Goose Creek has won the last two, and they've huh. won six of the last 11. A win tonight matches the longest win streak for Goose Creek in the series, in fact. Hmm. 77 through 79. Now, I bet you the players don't know that. Right. Because they were not even thought of back then. No. That was before I was born. How many wins does Jason have? In, is it like his... 100th win? 200th win? It is his 23rd at Goose Creek, but before. I mean, how deep into the research are we trying to go? I mean, you know, you're the, you're the <laughs> man. You're, I just assume because you're so efficient with your, with your job that, you know, don't worry. We'll be getting a text soon from Rain Man, and Rain Man will let us know. Oh, I'm gonna, I'll text Winston after the game at this point. I mean, now, now I'm curious. Maybe he doesn't know. Maybe the guys were just like, you know what? You put us through. A not fun week of practice after how we played at Somerville, and we're going to get you back. Pickle juice. This is the second or third time that Stephen Graham has been down tonight. Man, Berkeley's just had a night of it, man. It's been, it's been bad. Just one of those nights where Goose Creek was just the bigger, faster, stronger football team. They executed better than, uh, you know, obviously the, the Stags. Mm -hmm. And... That's going to happen. I mean, it happens to the best of them. We see it in the NFL. You see it in college where some nights things just don't go your way. But, again, with the type of offense that Dr. Jerry Brown wants to run, the one thing you have to have is reps, reps, reps. Get your timing, timing, timing down. And just right now, uh, Berkeley's just not been able to get on the same page because of that, that opponent that Dr. Brown said is undefeated, that being COVID. I think mm -hmm. his quote was, Bill Belichick couldn't beat COVID. <laughs> Hmm. Actually, maybe we should now we should say Nick Saban couldn't beat COVID because, well, everybody's beating Bill Belichick these days. Oh, he'll be one, a little barb. Well, he'll be one and three after yeah, Sunday. Yeah, there, there's a lot of hype for Sunday night's game, and rightfully so. It's Brady and Gronk, and they're going back to New England. And he's going to set the all-time passing record. He is. In terms of yards, he only needs, what, 68? Yeah, 67, 68, 68 right. in, in that range. So he'll do it. By the way, you're getting a shot of, of a couple of our crew throughout this. We appreciate all of their hard work, everything that they do. You can't see a lot of them because they're inside of the truck. Yeah. Best sideline guy right there in the business. Red hat over there. This uh, Speaking of red hat, the green hat that was in Trooper Bob's hand, like the neon green, if you turn the lights out, you'd still see it. <laughs> that is going to 
Dimitri Simmons. That's what you get for being the player of the game. There oh, it is. Reliable Charleston. But it's so well lit by the camera and the lighting that we have that it, does, that it doesn't show up just how neon it is from that shot. I'm telling you. So in other it, words, it would light a room. If Dimitri's trying to hide from somebody in a house. Don't wear the, the hat. Off, don't wear the hat. Don't gotcha. wear the hat. It makes sense. <laughs> gotcha. But proudly display it in your trophy case because it means you're the player of the game. On QFS Transportation, Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet, which Goose Creek wins. And the final buzzer is now 53-14. We'll bring you back for the trophy presentation and get you out of here. On QFS Transportation, Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Goose Creek racks up over 400 yards of offense. Simmons goes for well over 200, probably in the 250 range, and four touchdowns. And the Gators improve to 2-0 in region play. 53-14, an offensive show put on by the Gators here on QFS Transportation Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Let's throw it on down to Trooper Bob with that lightning green hat. Yeah, hey guys, we got number nine, Richard Simmons here, player of the game, reliable transfer, reliable equipment, player of the game. Coach, big turnaround from last week. What did you tell your team in practice this week to get them out here this fired up to put 53 points on the board? We, we knew last week wasn't our best performance, and we were just happy to be on TV again, and, and we wanted to show people and, and show the rest of the region that we're still here. And uh, they, they did a good job, and, and, and it worked out for us. You happy with tonight's outcome? Always happy with a win, always. Well, all right, well, hold on, guys. Don't go anywhere. We got a trophy presentation. This is, this is, this is your QFS trophy presentation. Enjoy it, guys. Congratulations. You, you can see how bright that hat is in there. Yeah, yeah, it stands out <laughs> for sure. Everyone loves a trophy. Goose Creek deserves a dominating performance tonight. For our entire crew, great job tonight, especially our sponsors as well. Thanks for making QFS Transportation Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruise Chevrolet, possible every single week. We're looking forward to it again next week as West Ashley hosts Ashley Ridge. QFS Transportation Friday Night Rivals. ABC News 4 at 11, Eisberg and Natalie Spala. For our entire crew and my partner, Everett German, I'm Darren Goldwater. We'll talk to you next week from West Ashley.